Hey fellow rockers, this is Billy Rock from Harpo, and you are listening to the Potter Than Hell podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is your last stop on the crazy train of hard rock and heavy metal. So sit back, buckle in, and hang on. Here we go. Hello, you Potter Than Hellions out there. Welcome to another episode of the Potter Than Hell podcast. My name is Steve. I will be your host. And I'm joined here, as always, by... BB. And... PC. And we have Dylan behind the keyboards. What's up, Dylan? Uh, not much. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I kind of surprised him on that one. I was ready to say my name. <laughs> I know. Got thrown out. I know. You got to change it up every now and then. I just want to say hello, everybody, and thanks for listening. And we're going to skip the news and everything today. We have a, a, a great interview today. And it's uh, very timely, and it's uh, Billy Rock from the band Harpo, the band that we've been talking about since maybe one of our first episodes, and they're just a great band, uh, an interview that we did the night before we were recording this, so we're going to roll that interview and take it away, Billy. Hey everybody, we are here with Billy Rock from Harpo. We are going to do an awesome interview with him. He was gracious enough to come and meet us here on this Saturday evening for this interview, and uh What's up, Billy? How are you? I'm good, man. Glad to come up and talk about the upcoming shows we got going on. Great. You know, but before we get into that, we got to get into the whole Harpo <laughs> saga. We need, we want, uh, we want the whole spiel here. Um, let's start out with how did you get into, how'd you get into music? Well, I was telling these guys that actually at, at dinner earlier that John and I have been playing together. Uh, I'm talking John Kistner, my keyboard player and, and singer for, for Harpo. We've been playing together since 1968. We had a band called The Arrivals, wow. and we were 13 years old, and we played all the uh, carnivals and talent shows, and we played uh, uh, audition for the Tony Grant Stars of Tomorrow for and down in Atlantic City on Steel Pier. Really? And we all we were all kids, the four of us that were in the band, and we all had this, uh, the, our drummer's mother had made us all the same outfits, and and uh, we would uh, have they had the beetle haircuts and the whole nine yards, and we all lived like within four blocks of each other. And it just so happened I played guitar, and John at the time played accordion, and he didn't even have a keyboard yet. <laughs> so think about that. It's like it's, Weird Al. Yeah, yeah. Then my, <laughs> then my other neighbor, who was, who was uh, his name was Bob Shiloh, he actually played guitar too, but we needed a bass player, so we had him get a bass, and we were all the same age, like right around 12, 13 years old. And that's how, I mean, I started playing guitar when I was eight. After seeing the, the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, I went, I'll never forget it to this day. I said to my mom, I'm seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan going, I want to do that. And, that, and it, was, it wasn't only about the music. It was about the, it was about the look. It was about the crowd, the, the girls, uh, the whole nine yards. Now, I'm eight years old now. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And I knew it was like something, just a bulb. I mean, not like to go off. It just blew up. Like, Fireworks like, started. I, I, I want to do that. And uh, it was just a short time after that, she bought me my first guitar for $24, my first acoustic <laughs> guitar. Started taking lessons and... This is great, history. great. History. Now, when you guys were playing those shows, what, like, what did you, were you playing Beatles stuff or just no, what was popular No, no, I tell you, if you think of Beatles stuff, man, that's, that's a lot of difficult shit. Can, can you say that? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. you can okay. Say whatever. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of difficult... We're rated R I here. Mean, the Beatles are, that's a tough band to cover, man. Not only musically, it may sound simple, but it's it's not. Yeah, that's some that's some major stuff going on, and and their vocals are just their harmonies oh, are different. Oh, harmonies, and, absolutely. Yeah, so no, we were doing stuff like uh, the letter by the box tops, the original. I'm talking original <laughs> version now. Uh, a band called Crazy Elephant uh, that had a hit. I, I couldn't tell you what the name of it was now, uh, but that's that's the kind of stuff we were doing. The, the grassroots. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Paul Revere and the Raiders, yeah, okay. monkeys. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, that's monkeys. what was that's what was going on, man. Right. I mean, that's that was what I was watching on on TV. Well, so that's what none we of us were. I was born in 1968, so none of these guys were around yet. But uh, that's great. And a lot of people we talk to, they either have a a Beatles moment like you had, or there's like a Kiss a moment, kiss moment. <laughs> right? Right. Well, you know? exactly. Whatever, whatever, you know, whatever age and, and yeah, genre was, you're right. you're yeah. impacted by. Yeah. But be, you know, not to interrupt you, but even before the Beatles, first time I saw Elvis, when I was like four or five, right. six, even then I was like, 
feeling something like wow something what, different what the you hell, can, what the yeah hell going on? What's, what's this and then then the, then the, then the beatles put it over the edge <laughs> that's great you and john pretty much stay together the whole the whole time we'll be, right we'll we'll be have been playing together for as of next year of 2018 50 years that's crazy. How, how crazy is that? that that's crazy. And, and he's, my, he's my best friend. We played in a little league baseball <laughs> together. He's, he's been my best friend for all those years. And to be honest with you, I don't know as, as long as we've played together if we've ever had a, a really true argument. Really? Yeah. Jeez. That in itself yeah, is amazing. Ex exactly. That's great. Yeah. You know, and, and it, it's tough these days to have just a, you know, a, a casual friend. Like, we're, we're like brothers here. And, and to hear that, and especially with you guys playing music because all you hear is bands fighting all the time that's you know you hear yeah. that you hear that all the time and no, you know behind the scenes you guys we, we didn't like you know, this guy we, yeah. we can't talk to this guy you have to be in separate rooms it's it's weird yeah, well, one, it, one of my road crew's wives actually made uh, john and i a, a, a plaque that has a picture of him and i together live from the bruce brothers west show back right. in uh what it would be 2012 now i think and the original arrivals picture, which was black and white, of us in our my original drummer's basement in 1968, <laughs> and it had then and now one hell of a ride, and it has the the two shots in a in a, in a double frame. That's I have it in my office in my in my house. It's really that's great. Really that, cool. That's awesome. And one hell of a ride's putting it lightly. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it, do a new Harpo album. There you go. One hell of a ride. Yeah, you know? there you go. <laughs> that'd be great. Right? <laughs> now, when you guys. Uh, I'm sure you know. You obviously went through a lot of a lot of band changes back then. When did you guys start with um, like the the hard rock? What guy? What band got into that? Would it be like Zeppelin? Yeah. So I mean, I just did an interview with Weekender to to promote the show, and uh, he uh, the the writer for for them asked me what what uh, what my major influences were. And I think it, it pretty much shows in in some of our music is kind of a Zeppelin and and ACDC kind of that just straightforward. Just kick ass rock stuff. And that's, that's, you know, that's what my, you know, in, especially in writing, I think it wasn't, you know, nothing intentional. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna rip this song off. I'm right. I'll take this and make it this. And, but I think just from everybody being fans makes their own. Yeah. I mean, and look at ACDC today. I mean, how many bands that can, you know, that have been touring as many years as they have? I mean, and, and they're still. They're still going. Selling out. You know, I don't know about the Axl Rose thing. But yeah. Eh, <laughs> yeah, that's another know. story. I don't know if they needed to go there. Yeah, we just did a show, we just did a show on that too about uh, Bon yeah, Scott. What was, and, what was your opinion on that? Um, BC's not for it. I'm uh, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the fence. The only thing I like is that he's getting them to play other songs that they haven't played. But it's really only Angus left in the band of, of ACDC because even Malcolm is out now. Well, it, him and the bass player. He's, he's gone gonna, now too. Oh, is he gone too? He's got, okay. Cliff Williams has gone uh, now too. Yeah, so he said this last guy. tour was his last. Yeah, so I, I didn't, I didn't quite get that. I thought if, if they wanted to continue touring because Brian was uh, uh, out, you know, due to his health reasons, I would have thought they would have gotten the the biggest uh, kick-ass uh, tribute, tribute singer yeah. out there yeah. and come out with a no name and and do it right. Yeah. Poor Axel, Priest. eh. I, I, I'm, I'm with you guys. I wasn't buying that. They could have pulled. They could have pulled Forrest up. Forrest. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're doing some Bon Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Bring uh, back the that, early that's, stuff. That's my opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We we were kind of. I was. I'm not really for it, but I just like that he has them doing different songs, and it was pretty much. Uh, but most of the people, they just wanted. They want to see Shook Me All Night Long. You know, they're yeah. the they want to hear the hits. Well, that's, and that's what you know. They, they talk about that. That was a discussion yeah. we were having before about why, at, at some point, we didn't like do and really force all our own music, which we actually did. At the point after John had his accident, we got Shmulek Abigail, who was uh, uh, the standing singer for the Rods for for a couple of years, and we came out during that time, and played all our own stuff. We were writing, I mean, the music though, the, the, the original and the music was just flying with, with Shmuley. We were writing songs like this. The chemistry was really good. And we came out, but we'd have to have one or two openers because we only had a you know catalog right. of, of so many songs because now John wasn't John wasn't singing Shmuley Gavigal. And then during this time, which was like 80, I'd have to say 89, late 89, 90, somewhere right in that area when we had uh, Shmuley and we just came out with our all our own stuff and people just didn't they just didn't like it 
they were I mean, it's not that they didn't like it. I think they was, it was it was too much of a change for them right. to, to take in. They wanted to see they one going, or two okay, covers I'm, here I'm and watching, there. I'm watching this going, okay, John's not singing anymore. Billy's not singing anymore. We, they got this, you know, little guy from right. Holland. Were there what, was there any any thought of changing the name of the band when that when that took place? Well, or, actually, or what, a, actually, what what it, what had happened was we actually did some demos after we did the Fire Your Fire uh, EP with uh, Carl Kennedy. We actually just for industry reasons changed the name to Avagal because Harpo the whole music climate had changed from what we had originally done that EMI and Polygram and all these all these record companies were looking at at the time and hearing it was no longer that because I wasn't singing John right. wasn't singing and our writing had changed a bit so we thought rather than try to confuse the the record companies at this because we were still trying to get a record deal I mean that's that's that was always our goal we we wanted a, we wanted get a, a deal national, and get out there we wanted a national deal so we were still feeding towards that so we actually just for we didn't sell any as Avigal because his last name was Shmulek Avigal we thought well why don't we just name it Avigal and just pitch that to record companies then there wouldn't be any ties to Harpo and see if that catches any right. buzz and then we can let them know okay guess yeah. what else we got going on. <laughs> right Surprise. so yeah that, but no other than that no other never, than that never it was thought, just never thought of changing the name for, okay. for any reason yeah because I remember seeing you guys uh, open up for Night Ranger at Rocky, Rocky Glen, Glen. Uh-huh. and uh, you guys were a five piece then, right? I played guitar, right? Yeah, because I remember because then, like, right after that, um, you know, we were only in high school a couple years after that, then we were in clubs, and then you're playing bass, yeah. But the majority of our fan, I was just telling you, yeah. the majority of our fan base just think I've always been the bass player, yeah, because I do remember you playing guitar, yeah. I was a second and, guitar player, and I'm with like, John I'm like I was five guys because then when we started seeing you in clubs, you're down to a four piece. Four piece. And I'm like, well, he was playing guitar last time I saw them, and there was someone else singing. Right. And a lot, a lot of the change came there where we made the decision to go to, to four-piece. And that was another choice that, that was kind of uh, not really the direction we wanted to go, but we made that decision after we did the... Uh, well, after Brian Perry, who played on the Arm to Deliver album as our bass player, uh, he moved on, and then we got uh, Mikkel... Amico, he was from Rochester, New York, who was uh, in uh, an Alice Cooper tribute band. And I remember seeing him in a, a club called the Playpen in, in Rochester. And I was looking for a bass player at the time. and went, wow, this guy, I mean, he had the long black hair. I don't know if he, that was probably before you guys started to, to come to see us. But he had the look and the bass player, I mean, he was like a Billy Sheehan. He had a rack bigger than most PAs. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm telling you what, he had that, he rode the bass real high and he had that Billy Sheehan thing going on. And it worked really, really well for a while, but being he was in Rochester, we were in PA to get together for rehearsal and that, you know, it kind of became a problem. So we said, you know, this, another change we had to make just because of those reasons, it uh, being a full-time band. Just geographically not working. Right, being a full-time band, we need to keep things moving. So uh, we parted ways with with Mickle, and then we started auditioning bass players. And what happened there is, Majority of the bass players were able to really grasp onto the cover stuff, but they couldn't grab the feel of our original stuff, and right. that's that was a must. If you if you're not making that work, I don't care how good you can play Balls of the Wall or ACDC right. DC or any of the cover stuff that we do, White Snake, Still of the Night, whatever. If you can't grab a hold of the the groove of our original stuff, it's not going to work. So we auditioned. Uh, I don't know. It was a handful of bass players. We didn't go too far with it. I had written the majority of the music, and in the studio, I was uh, laying the, the bass tracks down in between while we're auditioning bass players, and finally we said, you know what, why don't I just play bass, why don't we just go four-piece and, and play bass, and that's how that came about. It really wasn't by choice or by plan. Well, we're glad you did. Yeah, it, was def- <laughs> def- and, and, and it, 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 it fell into place pretty pretty easy. I mean, there, there were some things that, that missed being a, a two-guitar, but right. it was a strong guitar band man when you're talking to guitar players like you know John Hahn right. who, was, who was playing out of you know a stack of, of a Marshall turned to 11 and I had an Ampeg V4 stack I mean it was a badass guitar sound man when you got two guitars just ripping the shit out of stuff right. you know I mean we do stuff like Bark at the Moon you kind of lose that thickness of it yeah well and John Hahn was I mean he was a big Randy Rhodes guy when, when Ozzy first came out with, with Randy and, and we were doing a lot of the uh, cool cover 
stuff with uh, with Ozzy and Randy Rhodes stuff. But then then to go four piece, you know, the keyboards can cover some of that rhythm stuff, but it's not a guitar, right? You know, so we lost some of the meat with it, but uh, it's it seemed to work and seems to still be working. I think so, definitely, <laughs> definitely. We because you can. That's why we're, yeah, that's why we got some shows coming. I know, up, right? I know. Yeah, when you went to the four piece, and you went to bass. Is that when Chris came in? Yes. Well, actually, well, actually, what had happened? Where how that transformed into the four piece after the the, the short run with Schmulik, Avigal, and like I said that had to be. I said maybe a two year run that we thought that you know this isn't this isn't going to work. And then what I want I wanted to get back to the basics with the harp, like for the arm deliver and with John Hahn and start writing again. And then John wanted to go and do some solo stuff, which I totally respected. He, he said, no, nope. he said, we kind of made our push here. And then that's when the music scene changed as well. Mm-hmm. You're talking about 89, 90, going into 91, when the when the music scene just like a flick and a switch just went boom. Yep, just the other way. Yep, and and so he saw the writing on the wall and didn't really want to go, probably what he, maybe he considered Maybe with lack of a better term, backwards, but he had his solo thing that he wanted to pursue, and I totally respected that. So I talked to you know John Kistner, my my singer, who again we've been playing together since you know, the late '60s, and said, "Well, you know, what do you want to do?" And I said, "Let's forge forward and see what we got." So then that's when we um, auditioned, uh, started auditioning guitar players. We only auditioned a couple. Chris Silvani was in a band called uh, a cover band called Red Baron. Out of Williamsport, I never, I didn't know who he was to be honest with you, and I, you know, I tell him this day, I don't know who you were. I remember him coming up to me and <laughs> at, a, at a club called Fiddlesticks in, in Milton, mm-hmm. and he said, "Hey, I hear you're looking for a guitar player." I says, "No, we're not," <laughs> because you know one of the, so those things when you're in a band like that in, in your full time, you don't want that getting out, getting out right. and you know people going, oh, "What the hell's going on?" Right. You know, then all of a sudden people will have some kind of conceived idea of what you know, they're not going to like it or right, they're what, changing it's. Exactly, and change sometimes isn't for everybody, and sometimes if you, no matter how good the person you may be replacing is, that replaced the person that was already a killer player. Change isn't for you, you for all the fans. They still they're still going to have that break in period right. where they well, exactly, and that and that's where they want to check it out, and they may not check it out. Oh, you know, they're not going to have the same guy. Exactly, and that's what them. that's what, and that was a lot of the problem with with the Schmulik Abigail era of, of almost two years you know we lo- there was a lot of change right going on there and that was uh you know majorly due to you know john's accident in 88 when he was out of the band for almost a year when being a full-time band we had to we had to keep things moving like i said right. we, we had no other income first of all so we went then four piece with john Hahn still in the band we went four piece and i did all the vocals but then again we had that we didn't have enough material with john gone because he sang even more than i did right so we'd have to have like two openers to try to keep this train moving, plus keep record industry keep the interest, interest there. going. Right. We didn't have anything to offer new other than you know the Arm Deliver album at that time, plus the the five song EP from '81. Tell us about those recording. How did how did they come about? What, so you have the EP came first, right? EP came first. That was in I believe we released that in '81 or '82. '81. And that and that stemmed from. Um, an agency out of uh, Buffalo, New York, called uh, uh, Mallard Management. They saw us. Well, it was his name was Jim Taylor. He saw us in Ottawa, Ontario, when we were up here touring, and saw the band and loved it, and, and said, "Hey, I said I have uh, you know connections with this studio. Uh, I can't remember where it was in New York. Well, we we, well, we we did a lot. Like we did pre-production, and I think we did some in in Rochester and." I forget what different little areas of, of New York that we that we did some of the, the the demos and things for the first album. But he produced that. That's how that came about. He heard the stuff and said, you know, "Yeah, I have connections with the studio. I'll produce your produce your album." Right. So that's how the first album came about. Now you say you were touring in Canada. Were you touring just Harpo touring, or were you touring with another band? No, it was it was Harpo, and uh, and I told these guys over dinner how that came about. And every every Part of the Harpo story comes with somebody seeing us that made the connection to put us here, whether it be recording albums, putting us on tour in, in, in Canada. And the, the, how we got the Canadian tour in 1977 was we were doing an outdoor concert with um, 
a band called Frankie and the Knockouts, which was uh, like a, a one hit. One I couldn't tell you the name of the song, but if you heard I know, the song, I'm trying to think of it you know, myself. If, if, if you if you heard the song, you go, yeah, I've I've heard that. <laughs> and uh, up at State College, and every 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 year they'd have this event out in the out in Hub Lawn, and they'd always have a you know a national act to headline, and then they had like seven eight bands throughout the day that would start at like noon and go in the, the the evening, and and that would be the that would be the day, and they had us. So we were big in State College at the time. They had us right on before Frankie the Knockouts. Well, here, their management was out of Toronto, Canada, called Canadian General Artists. They saw Harpo opening in front of Frankie the Knockouts. Did he knock them out? They went, well, <laughs> they, they, must have, they, they tracked down our management, who was there at the time, and our management was out of State College. And they went to her and said, would you want to put your band on tour in, in Canada? And she, I remember her coming to us, going, well, you know, what do you, what do you guys think? And we're like, I mean, I was in my at the time probably early, early twenties, going, fuck yeah, yeah fuck yeah, man, let's, <laughs> let's go do this. And, and within within four to six weeks, they had an eleven week tour booked, really for us. Yep, yeah. wow. first first tour that we did up there, we started in Kirkland Lake, Ontario, which is a far, it's up there. Booked this for uh, 11 weeks, 66 nights out of 77 days we played. We did seven wow. weeks We did seven weeks in Ontario, four weeks in Quebec. We played Montreal, yeah, Rouen. That's crazy. Yeah. And now, they weren't, it wasn't all one-nighters. I mean, we'd go and they'd have these, in a lot of the cities, they had these hotels that would run bands six nights, Monday through Saturday. Oh, really? So you'd go in, you'd set your shit up, and you know, then you'd be there, and you'd stay in the hotel you know, night and, and party. Party and rock, all right. rock and party, oh, and, and then, then, then you know, fit, <laughs> kind of fit some sleep in there somewhere along the way. <laughs> Let's bring that stuff back. Holy wow. shit, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Now, were you playing with any uh, any known bands then, or just you guys and just no, whoever no, else was, just, was there? It was just us. How was the How was the crowd reaction? Awesome, really. It was It was just awesome. I mean, we we took we took off up here real quick just from the exposure. You could you'd be playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in, in the same hotel, and you'd have, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, you'd have 60, 70, and then by the weekend, there'd be three, 400. Hanging off the rafters. Yeah. 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 And I'll never forget that well, we, were, we were playing in, in uh, St. Thomas, and uh, the, well, that was one of the first, I think within the first couple of weeks that, that we played, in, and how they would, you weren't able to get up, and, and when you were in, in Canada back in those days, you weren't able to get up with your beer. Like if you had an open container and a beer, you couldn't get up. You had to leave that at your at your table, and if you had to go to the bathroom or if you wanted to go pick up chick or, or whatever, you couldn't be carrying your, your oh, yeah? beer around. So all, all your all your beer stayed at the at the at the table, and at the end, at the end of songs and stuff, they wouldn't clap. They <laughs> and it was like. <laughs> you know. What the fuck is this? And, they want to put their beard on. Oh, and at the end of the night, shit was smashing, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, and I'll never forget it. When we were in St. Thomas, they actually had the uh, uh, OPP had to come in and, and shut it down because people would not leave. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, up, and we ended up we ended up touring consistently. We were actually spending more time up in up in Canada than we were in the United States for like uh, the next five, four or five years. That's great, yeah, but, and I'm sure it would, it would be totally different now with work visas and all that shit. Oh, that. we wouldn't you even just no. cross the you know you just cross the border and then you go play. Now yeah, now yeah, you know, got the red tape know, would be just yeah, be, well, yeah. would just be insane yeah. to, to yeah, have to do something and like that. And now the you know the, the money exchange is totally the yeah. other way. Actually, the, the the Canadian dollar was worth more than the American dollar when we were when we were touring at that time. Oh now, really? Now it's way now it's, now it's, it's way yeah it's way definitely way definitely different yeah. But I mean, who knows what clubs that we did then, or like just like even now. still around. What clubs are around here? I know. I mean, where do you go? where do you guys go? Penn's Peak. Penn's Peak. Penn's Peak. <laughs> There's a couple bars. Uh, you guys played Tomatoes a lot once in a while. They'll still have a band there. Confetti's is gone. All um, of them. Gallagher's is oh, gone. Yeah, that's a you know, yeah. everywhere we used to see yeah, you guys. Pretty much got CC's burned down. Before Night Tracks, the Jitterbugs. Yeah, Jitterbugs. Right. Jitterbugs. Yeah. 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 We used to make that track. Autographs and old forge. Jitterbugs was a tough ride for us. Oh. <laughs> I can tell him. I said, <laughs> "Don't try time, this at home." <laughs> all the times we went to Tomatoes, I said, "There was a few times it's like, you wake up the next morning going, whoo." I know. Thank God it was close. There's a walk home. There's nights we would get home from seeing you guys and and. You know, I'd see BC at the firehouse the next day, and we'd be kind of like, uh, 
how the fuck did we get home last <laughs> night? Like, do you remember anything? And then like, you remember someone dropping you off, but you don't, you know, Who you don't was? really remember how the hell you got home. It was just, it was crazy. Well, well, I told these guys that when we first started playing up here, and it was the same agency for out of state college that got us uh, booked up in here in, in this Wilkesbury Square neighborhood. There was a band called Dar from up this way. Now, now, I'm, now I'm not talking. This is now 76, 77. Oh, okay. And one of the first clubs that we played was at Tomatoes, and they had uh, beer bash night on Wednesday nights. Five bucks, they'd hand you a mug, and it's all you could drink. <sighs> Holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> I'd pay twenty and, for that. And, and there'd be and there'd be <laughs> three, four, or five hundred people in and out on, on a Wednesday on, night. On a Wednesday night, so the exposure we got right away really just started lighting things up for us up in this area right okay we, we caught like fire up here even as early as even back 77 then. 78 and then yeah then it just kept getting i was in grade school yeah <laughs> <laughs> believe you. that's crazy that, that that's just insane yeah. i mean you can that's they awesome. can never do that now no, I mean, oh god. my gosh but we were talking everything's so different you can't go and have a good time anymore because first and foremost there's nowhere really to go out anymore and mm-hmm. No, it, law enforcement is out to get you Johnny for Cooper. anything and everything. So it's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, tough. Yeah, because we remember the the one night we saw you guys at at Tomatoes. That LCB came in that night, <laughs> and and they were there. And and the thing that aggravated me, which I'm sure it aggravated you guys a hundred times more, they could have raided the place during a break, but they waited till after you came on for your second set, second played half a song, and shut the fucking yeah, place yeah. down. Yeah, well, they did the same thing to us at because uh, I tell you what. Guys, they, they knew when Harpo was anywhere in the area, <laughs> yeah. the place was going to be fucking romping. Mm-hmm. They, they knew it. They did the same thing to us up at uh, Confetti's. Really? Yeah. Where they came in and, 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 and shut it down. Fuckers. I remember playing up. We used to play up there four nights a week. We played there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think I still, I think the most. I think I saw you guys like two nights in a row up there. Yeah. I think it was the most. Well, and, you know, it started out at four nights. Then it went to, you know, Friday and Saturday. Right. Because yeah. then there were more bands out playing, yeah. too. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I mean, there was there was a minimum, without being able to name them all, at least ten to twelve clubs that, that we could play up in this area from. Oh, easily, from, easily. From Manicoke up through. Now, now, there, now there's not too easily. Now, <laughs> yeah. Now they were lucky if there's yeah. two. It's well, just... we had we had to struggle to figure out where we were going to do this 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 year's show because, uh, and the only reason why we're doing it again is is the fans still want to see it, and that's that's why we're coming out and doing it. And this isn't about us saying we like we want to. I mean, we want to do it, but we're doing it for the fans, not for our own right. reasons or, or, or purposes. Right. We're doing it. It's, all, it's always been about the fans, and the fans have been so good to us, not only in this area, but, you know, all over. I mean, we have fans coming from, uh, from Buffalo, from Binghamton, for, these, for both these shows. That's great. Yeah. That, that is just, like, incredible. Because, I mean, you guys were always, we would always go see these guys, and we'd go up and Billy would come and talk with us and bullshit and have a beer with us in between sets and before shows we we bullshit and stuff and even chris and john rick, rick we we don't really know him very well like he didn't really rich rich, rich. i'm sorry rich that's and, how um, well you'd know him I, I know, i'm sorry we know his name. and um we won't forget his name now <laughs> but like like you you and john and chris like you know we come up and it's like not like you know hey billy remember me it's like like you guys remember your fans oh you yeah guys, you know you you come up and you're like hey what's going on and it's not just like oh hey how are you you know Fuck you guys yeah. with rock stars. No. See you later. I mean, no. It's like there, it's there's nothing. No. It's nothing it's like never, that never, at all. You walk been, in the door to bar. Hey! <laughs> yeah, it's never never been like that, and never will be. That's that's great, and and you see, it's it's sad that you see a lot of that shit. People are like, you know, we're we're in the band. We're too good to, you know, even talk with you. You know what? Go fuck yourself. Well, especially now with the way with the way the scene is, I mean, you'd really be shooting yourself in the foot if you're yeah. really going to treat your you know treat yeah. Your and the way like it is now, you're glad yeah. anyone comes yeah. out. Exactly. 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 The way shit is, you know, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So tell us about some of the 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 bands that you guys have played with. You guys have played some pretty big shows out there. I know we've seen you guys open up for Queensrÿche. What other bands like that have you guys? Well, played just with? just from just from up in this area, we well, we did the Queensrÿche show with, at Montage. We did. Uh, Night Ranger show at Rocky Glen. We played with Joe Cocker up at the up at Confetti. It was it was the playpen at that time before it was called the playpen before it was called Confetti's. And then we you know, we've done we've done shows like uh, with with Jackal and Warrant and Winger. We did a, like a mini tour with Winger by, and back when they were like big. We did uh, TLA in Philadelphia. We did the Airport Music Hall 
in Allentown. And, and, and everybody's always treated us really well, too, because I think they had respect for, I mean, we were just some... You guys weren't a bunch right. of teenagers coming exactly. out of that garage. Exactly, yeah. You guys, I mean, in most of them bands you mentioned, you guys were playing around longer than they were. Well, I got I got a, I got a story to talk about the respect that we that we had with uh, just about everybody that, that we had up with, uh, that we had opened for. Uh, we had done uh, we were playing Jitterbugs. Now this, but that was before it was called Night Tracks. It was a Sunday night. The next night, it was Monday, Jackal was opening for Aerosmith at Montage. So we're playing Jitterbugs Sunday night. Who comes walking in? It's Tommy Bettini. From he's a bass player from Jackal and a couple guys from his crew. Nobody else from Jackal was there, like Jesse Dupree right. was, you know, none of But it's and I recognized him right away. And we were in the middle of our set, and he was just blown away by my band. I mean, he he just couldn't. He said he wanted. To, did he have the have CDs? I said I want a shirt, and he said you know he wanted all. Blah, right. blah. And I'm like yeah yeah cool. And he looked at the shirt, and goes oh he said man he said I'll wear this tomorrow night on stage. We're like yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Yeah. So they played Montage the next night. We were at CeCe's and Music the following Friday of that week. Here comes this chick with pictures from Montage. There's Tommy Bettini in front of 10,000 plus people with a fucking heart bush. <laughs> that's great. How cool oh, that is, very cool. is that? I mean, that that's, that, cool. that's, that's, the imp- that's the impression that we made on him. And we got up, now listen to this. He asked if we did any Jackal stuff. And at the time, we did uh, When Will It Rain? And we, had, we did, uh, they had just... I don't even think their Push Comes to Shove album was out yet. And the only reason why we knew Push Comes to Shove, we knew a radio guy, he was a DJ out of a, a radio station in Weems Sport, that he had the uh, premiere demo oh, right. of it or whatever before it was thing. actually released, right? So he laid that on us, and the, the song was really cool, so we worked it up. We thought, we'll be on the cusp of this, you know, this is going to be happening. And he was like, how the fuck did you guys know that? And I told him the story, and he goes, he said, do you mind if I get up and, and play a song? Well, sure. <laughs> Here you so, go. So he was left-handed, okay? Takes my fucking bass, turns it upside down, and that's how he played it. Just like Hendrix, you know, really? you know Hendrix played yeah, right, a right-handed right. guitar, he played but, left-handed? Yeah. That's what Tommy Bettini did. Just turned <laughs> the fucking ups, upside down and, yeah, and did One Little Rain on, on stage at Jitterbugs. Talking about the T-shirt thing, I, I looked for it, I can't find it, but out of one of the magazines back in the day, Great White. Right? Picture the band and they have... Uh, the Pennsylvania Harp, Rockers. Harpo shirt on. Yeah, yeah. Mark Kendall had it. Well, that's <laughs> that, that was back yeah. that was back in the day when we had when we were with management with with Mean Greek Management with Wade Perry who was a tour accountant for Whitney Houston, and that's when we were literally blowing up. We had just released our on the Deliver album. This was before John Zaxxon. We just got done recording that. We had already sent before before the album was actually released. All the demos had already been going out to to record companies. Okay. And we're already in Middle Edge, Circus. I mean, all these magazines, that might, that might be for right. you guys. Oh, no, 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 so that's that's what I mean by the connection. There's we some had. there's some good free advertisement for you yeah. right there. Yeah. Because I mean, people will look people would look at that and say, you know, who? I mean, I've done that. I mean, I've seen pictures of guys with band shirts on that you've never heard of, and you you would you would check them out. Well, that's that's what I mean by you know the respect that we had from you know a lot of the bands that, that we had that we had played with. I mean. Obviously, if Tommy Patino thought my band sucked, he ain't wearing a Harpo shirt. And, you know, yeah, <laughs> he's not going to get up and ask you to play bass. He, well, play, oh, play exactly. Song, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. He's, he's just going to walk. He's just going to walk out. Yeah, he's just going to say, say okay, "Next." Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's I'm not going to get on stage with yeah. you guys. That's incredible. Tell us about some of your crazy fan experiences. Uh, I, I know, I know. One of our our friends, Paul, that comes to the show, he does. He has a smoking gun Harpo tattoo. Right, he has, he has more than one. He has all. Harpo. Yeah, does he? I think he has one for every album. Right. Oh, he might. Yeah. I think he, he might. I mean, he's no, got. I think he has. I think he has smoking gun on one. He has too much on the other. No, we do. We do have some really loyal fans, without a doubt. And I mean, anybody who's going to, uh, you know, scar their arm with uh, with a tattoo with 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 my band's name on it, that's that's a, you know, I mean, that doesn't make him any bigger fans than what you guys. I know you guys are huge fans and and love it. It's fans like yourselves is why again why we keep why we keep doing this. But we have. Uh, Name's Kimmy, and I'm sure you guys know who she. You've probably seen her at Harpo's shows. But she's got a, 
the heart bulldog on the back of her neck. Tattoo. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah, you know, you know who she was. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just you know, it's it, it's crazy, and, and and I don't sometimes don't have a hard time getting it. I mean, about how people are. I mean, it, it's it's hard to understand sometimes the, the loyalty that that uh, we've gone to. Oh, uh, we've gone to shows like Philadelphia, New Jersey, and one of us that have a Harpo shirt on, and without fail, someone will come up, Harpo. Harpo, yep. man. It's like one big family. I think a couple times at M three, like there's there's a group of like ten of us that go to M three, and it was recently where la, la, it was last year, and there was and, there was the guy another guy with a Harpo shirt. And I, and I, and I, I don't know if I remember if I Facebooked a picture to you or Chris, but I was like, oh my god, look at that guy he has a Harpo shirt on, and, and it's just yeah. like it's like one big family. It's like, but then you go oh, over and start start bullshit with them, you know, yeah. and you have yep. a whole uh, twenty minute half an hour. Well, next time your crew's going to an M three. So let me know. I'll, I'll drag along. I'd like to see one of those. We go, every year. Yeah. we go every year. Yeah. BC and I have not missed a year. This year's the tenth year that they're having it. This is the tenth anniversary. When, when 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 is when is that? Uh, we, uh, we think we it's think the first it? weekend in May this year. LA Guns is uh, listed for May fifth in Columbia, Maryland. And was it like a three day thing? Or? Just a two night. Two it's a Friday night well, for an all day now Saturday. It's, now it's three days with the Southern. Rock. They do a Southern they Rock do a thing southern on Sunday, which we go home. But you never know. They may change it up being 10 year they may. anniversary. They we may don't do know. three days. I think it's usually Friday to the whole thing Ugh. instead of just the first. Yeah, let night. me let me know, man. I I I'd love to tell you. It's a good time with you guys. It's a good time. You got the room. You get to see BC having fun. Make sure you don't get roofied. BC been BC has been roofied there one year. Yeah. That's a whole other story. Take it so it's a whole other podcast. Go take it to my uh, grave. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a show. Who roofied BC? <laughs> <laughs> I know a girl. Nice little murder mystery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you listening to now, Billy? I tell you, I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of octane. And I, I'm not really because usually I'm, I'm I'm so busy and I'm either getting ready for work or getting ready to do whatever. And, and really, a lot of the bands I don't don't even Avenge Sevenfold. I'm, I'm digging straightforward stuff like uh, like. Rev Theory's not getting too much now, but I, I know they, that's they're, they're one of the bands. When one of the reasons why I put Sucker Punch together, you know, bands like that, were more of a straightforward, just kick-ass rock stuff. Uh, but really, a lot. To be honest with you, a lot of bands I just don't pay a whole lot of attention because I usually, I, I just don't sit and and, and listen because right. I'm always doing something. Okay. You know, but, um, tell us about Sucker Punch, which was awesome. Any any chances of revival of that? No. 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 That was a great. Tell us about though. Yeah. I, I, we loved it. We, we thought loved it was great. It was... Well, you know, I, I put that together because of the of the new string of bands that were that were coming out. When I was listening to uh, Octane and hearing a, a bunch of these uh, new bands coming, that, that that the guitar thing was coming back around again. It wasn't. Thank God. Uh, it wasn't no rip. You know, there was actually some real riffing and right. And I thought it was a little, you know, different from the from the Harpo stuff. And we, and we had been, you know, out of the game for a while. And I, and I had the itch to to play. And I've been, th- I was thinking about putting a band together for, you know, quite a few years while we were, you know, on not really thinking of doing anything with Harpo. Right. And I still, I, I wanted to play, but I, I wanted to make sure it was a, a right kind of direction that I wanted to, to take. And I was hearing this stuff, and and uh, I talked to Chris, you know, my guitar player from Harpo, and uh, I had a. Uh, Singer who was in a band called Torque that I managed for for a couple of years, uh, about five years back. Saw what he, you know, found out what he was doing and, and put this thing together. And I really thought it would, uh, you know, take off because it was a new, and, and it was a lot of stuff. Ninety seven X was playing, right. and and I'm thinking, man, this this could this could take off. And really, we came up here and did a couple of clubs. I think I think one of them was uh, Bruce Brothers, the Bruce Brothers in Pittston. Yeah, it was a smaller. Right. Thing, but we played a couple. We played a couple rooms. Uh, there was a place called Rock Stars that that was real short lived. That only oh, lasted yeah. for about a yeah. year or so. Because yeah, we saw you at the V Spot. Yeah, that, that was late. But that was later on. Yeah. And I th- I thought there would be a, an audience, especially. Uh, Maybe even a younger audience that, that was grabbing on to this new that music, that new sound yeah. coming out, and I thought, man, I put a, ba- a good band together that does this stuff. This is gonna. I, I remember rehearsing and, and calling Chris on the before we even came out, calling Chris and he was on his way home. I called him on the cell phone. I said, you know, and I said this is this is gonna be this is gonna be big, and, and I, I really I really did because it was all this new stuff that I thought was really gonna take off. But it was. the audience was the audience was never there. The younger audience they they aren't going to clubs. They aren't going to see live bands. They just they just weren't doing it. There were guys like you know Harpo fans come out and see it, and and to be honest with you, half 
like you guys got it and liked it half half did half didn't and I never put it together to bring the Harpo fans along if you liked it cool if you didn't I respect that and I respect yeah. your you know your love right. for the band Harpo and you don't like you know that, that and that's cool but I didn't do it to, to draw Harpo fans right I, I thought we'd draw a whole new audience whole new and, and, new. and the Harpo fans that dug it wanted to come oh, cool right but yeah like I, I acquired it too uh, like when you played Harpo you, you did accept you know Skid Row and stuff like right. that this was Sucker Punch was like God smack, doing the, the, the more yeah. modern yeah. version the yes. modern of, of the of modern that, hard rock right. heavy Harpo Right. Yeah. Well, Billy, you said you, you produce. You, you you had the you had your lead singer. You you produced his band. Now, oh, you, no, I I managed. I managed. Yeah, I've managed. Manage you, if you are, will. are you doing anybody now? No, no, no. Just, I, just, I, uh, I I I did something. That that and that's when there was still a little bit of a club scene still right. still left. That's why I, I yeah. I, and and I mean I had him. I don't know if you guys were ever at the Crowbar in State College. Really? No, no. I, yeah, I've yeah, heard I, of it. Yeah, real. And that's and that's gone. That's, that's another gone. club that's 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 no longer. It hasn't been around for now a couple of years. That was a really cool club. In uh, but they these guys were from like the Mifflinburg area souls. They were doing was like uh, VFWs and, and mooses and stuff like that. And I got them doing uh, some clubs in Pottsville and the Coalhole and Shemokin, oh, yeah. which is no longer. Really? And the clubs I had them in Pottsville are no longer. Every club that I've, I've Peppermint ever, Lounge is gone. gone yeah. Yeah. And, and even if it didn't burn, that, that'd be that'd be gone. Yeah. That, that, they, oh, yeah. they wouldn't be doing anything. Yep. You know. So everything's uh, so different. Just, yeah. So that's that's how I you know knew him from from that band, and um, then we, we put this thing together. And actually, we had a, it was we had that thing together for seven years. That, yeah. I mean, that, that's a long time for most yeah. bands. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. You know what I mean? Especially I didn't realize it was that long. Especially the climate of the scene. Now. Oh, definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah, and then it just got to, you know, it, it just got to a point with all our work schedules and it came down to, you know, rehearsal time and, you know, just couldn't put enough. It's an investment, you know, not even mentioning monetarily, just time-wise. It's oh, just exactly. Be, monetarily. You know, just it, totally, totally consuming. Because right. even just doing this podcast is, trust me, just ask my yeah. wife how consuming this is. Yeah, and, 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 and monetarily. You know, but, you know, you, you do it because you love it. Exactly. But it's still... It still takes a big. It's a big chunk of your, of your your week out. And and you know when we were with the Harpo thing, when we were doing it full time, when we weren't playing, we were rehearsing. I mean, it, it was all hundred and ten percent focus on the band. I mean, that's what that was because for twenty five years, that's what we did full time. Right. We released six albums and a, and a uh, live DVD, and uh, and it was all about that. I mean, that's how we made a living. We didn't we didn't have day regular jobs. Right. And, you know, and if you're not if you're not playing it, you're sure as hell thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just it's a constant constant thing going in in your mind, and you're thinking of what you know what what are we doing? What are we gonna do? What could we do? Yeah. You know, it's just got to be just just crazy. Well, just, then with the, with the scene the way it, the way it is, and the way it was even during this the the sucker punch period, there were so few in in between clubs, so we weren't playing enough to keep it. Fresh and, and active and exciting, and then you know, there might be two, three, sometimes four weeks or longer in between gigs, and then when you have a hard time even you don't re- have that freshness. Schedule. Yeah, you don't have a, you have the time to even get together a schedule or rehearsal. Then you got to kind of be working on your own to keep fresh of what you already play live, just to keep it so you, you know you're not fucking up when you're out, right. out doing it live. And it just got to a point where like. This, this, this has run its course. Because, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, my feeling is it's called live music for a reason. You can practice in your bedroom not the same. forever. Yeah. Not the same as when, when you lock in. Once you are out there with someone actually playing, it's got to be a totally different thing. Yeah, so it, it just became of, you know, not enough time being put in to keep the interest. Right, because if it's not a full-time thing, it's... Yeah, I mean, if, if there would have been, if there would have been more activity... Club-wise, that we were playing, even every other week, one night a week, every other week, just to keep things, right. you know, fresh, fresh. and tight and, and and going. But you know, when you're going sometimes a month, month and a half in between gigs, and then you know having a hard time getting together in between gigs to rehearse, and you know, it's hard to hard to keep it gelled. Tough to keep it gelled, absolutely. Harpo, when you when you released your original LP in '81, and then Armed and Delivery came out in '87. Those six years. What are you guys doing as a band? Well, we had we had some changes. Okay, after after uh, on the first record, our original guitar player was George Zerby, and strangely enough, not long after we released the album, 
he left the band. He, I mean, really, I don't even know if the album was actually released. It was getting ready to be released. I don't even think that uh, we did any shows with him after the album was, was actually released. So we went through a change there, and he was the main writer. I didn't write anything on the first on the first album. Oh, okay. Okay, that was all written by, music Music was written by George Zerby, and Jack Pyers was our bass player. He wrote the majority of the lyrics. I think John wrote, uh, uh, wrote the lyrics to, to Feel Your Love, which was a, one of the cuts off the, off the first album. Right. So we went through a change there right away, and it was kind of a scary change because we're like, all right, we just released an album. Who's gonna, who's gonna write? Because he wrote all the, he, George wrote all the music for that. Plus we had another probably half a dozen songs that we didn't the put on the record. We were only doing a five song EP. For that long. Okay, what the hell do we do now? So I, I didn't know I could write. I never, you know, we had a guitar player who was writing and I'm like, well, I'll play what you write and there we go. And then without really knowing if I could write or not, I just started fucking around with riffs and and I started writing and we got, we started auditioning guitar players to replace George Zerby. Then we, I think we went through, I don't know, not many guitar players and we found John Hahn and uh, then he, he came in and he was a, uh, he was a writer. I mean, he wrote a lot of the stuff on the arm to live Rob. Him and I were music, wrote, wrote all the music on the, on that one. On, and I wrote some lyrics as well on, on, uh, on the arm to live album. So in between that chain, we were kind of, uh, took a little bit of a change to, gel with a new lineup, replace a guitar right. player, especially a lead guitar player, and a lead guitar player who did all the writing. So that took some time for that to, to gel, and then for us to actually start to write. It was a long period to make that happen and write music to get to where we were to release new stuff with the Arm Deliver album. Right. So that's kind of... You know, in five, six years, sounds like a long time, but it, it, it wasn't. It, it goes, it goes pretty went by quick. so quick. You yeah. know what? I see in your future the Billy Rock Vault. <laughs> the Vault. Have yeah. you seen the, the Gene Simmons 150 album, 150 song, five disc vault he's releasing? I could see you putting out 150 songs that Harpo fans have never heard before. Yeah. Oh, well, there's 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 some stuff between you and John from back then. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do you know? Are there any video? documentation of your guys' older shows? Like, even like when you played in Canada or just like out in like the early formative years? Are, are there, is I there have, any, I any have, bootlegs out? I, or I have, I think I have some, uh, I don't know if it's cassette or CD from some of the shows we did in, you know, us, and we were mostly doing covers then. We weren't writing. And like I said, this is three excuse me, three, four years before we released the first album. When we started touring Canada in 77, we were doing stuff like Peter Frampton and, you know, do you feel that? Yeah. We, you know, that, that, that. Talk box and all? Yeah, no, no, no. no, 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 no <laughs> but we, what, we, <laughs> what we were doing, we were doing some, some Zeppelin <laughs> stuff too and then some kind of, you know, along with the Stairway to Heaven, which was the, you know, the, the big ballad. The one you had to play. You want to call it a ballad. Yeah. yeah. But we were doing stuff like, you know, the Rover, Custard Pie, I mean, some really obscure, some deep, some deep cuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> any any chance of any of that ever seeing the light of day? Doubt it. Doubt Cause, it. Because I mean, it, the, the you know, I mean, it's not like the hot shit phones now that can record. Yeah. Well, how about, how about how about original wise? Um, like early demos, any any yeah, like, like you that said, the Harbo EP. You said you had all these. They only released five, but say you had like ten banked. What about are those? Were those five released? Are those in your on, closet somewhere? Yeah, where, where are they hiding? <laughs> well, we uh, got to go to Billy's house and raid, <laughs> we're raid, get a raid, search warrant. Raid, the, the <laughs> we got to raid the audio closet. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure there's some lost tapes somewhere, but I, you know, I, I really, I, I don't have, I, I wish I did. You know, some of the, I mean, we did uh, with WQSU, which is one of the one of the papers here that uh, we became one of the, the most requested. You know what it was? It was a radio station out of Susquehanna University, and we had done a demo tape. I think it was four or five songs. I don't even know if any of them actually made the, the first album. And it was just a tape that, that we that we did, and they were playing on QSU. Became the most requested band. Then actually ended up. Uh, it got so. Crazy! They wanted us to do a show at the at SU, and we did the Weber Chapel Auditorium, which sat 1,500 people, and we sold it out <laughs> from a demo. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And we, we talk about it on the on the show all the time. 
about listening to music. And back then, you said all that was just off of a tape. People were actually... Now, number one, there wasn't as much stuff out at that point as there is now. Because there's so much free music out there now that it's yeah. just incredible. But I've said it many times in the show. People just don't listen to, the, listen to music the way that they used to. No. You know, you used to get an album, sit down... Put it on, put your headphones you on. You know, it's at. big, like the size, yeah. you know, like a of a book. newspaper. Like, yeah. You know, but now you don't have that. Everything's downloadable and, yeah. and all this. And we like well, BB's he's a downloader. BC and I, we're, we like the hard copy see, in our hands. Like it's a bad word. Like, it is. It is. I, I want the I want the product in my I'm hand sorry, to yeah. to, to see and syndrome. and it just it takes you back. But people don't listen to music the way they used to. And, and I've said on our show before that I like to, at least once a week, put on an album. or Well, well I don't have a, a, a record player right now. But put, on a, put in a CD and get that CD out and read the jacket and listen to the whole thing. Because, like, people don't really do that anymore. Yeah. And that's how I think was one of the big declines of music that people yeah, just... Everything's lost, too yeah. easy. Everything's just too easy to... Push yeah. your I, I don't want to... I don't want to buy the whole album, so I like Shook Me All Night Long from ACDC, so I'm just going to download that song. Yeah. But you're missing the best songs yeah, on yeah. the album. And, and, and to me, Shook Me All Night Long is the worst song on the album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Literally we we like trashed that no. song almost <laughs> every I show. I didn't like it. First time I heard, first time I heard Back in Black, we were doing a... a club called the Salty Dog in Buffalo, New York, and it was, because uh, I never I never saw um, ACDC with Bon Scott, and, you know, it was a tragedy when when uh, they, they lost that singer, and what a storyteller, you know, he was, and again, coming off a record like Highway to Hell, which was just, you know, I mean, we did probably half that record, you know, the highway to you hell. guys do, do ACDC oh, right. incredibly. And uh, then we're, we're thinking, okay, who's going to replace this guy? And then, and then, then they replaced with a singer who sounded absolutely nothing like Bon Scott. And the first song I heard was was Back in Black, and I'm going, fuck, man, is this is this going to work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh, you're talking Hell's Bells, and uh, I mean, I mean, every, every song except for like. Shook me all like, uh, like, okay, that, yeah. that, that, that must be a B-side thing. That ended up being the really <laughs> first... And, and actually, the, the only time that, that that song actually sounds a little bit good to me is if you're at a wedding. Yeah, I was going to say... And you're yeah, drinking all night and listening to fucking dance <laughs> music all night long. If you listen to dance music and country music all night. Like, And I'm not exaggerating. Every single semi and prom I've ever been to, You Shook Me All Night Long has been played every yes. single time. But Every time, but yeah. compared to dance music, of course, it's like yeah. <laughs> but there's 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 two other two, two other bands that I heard for the for the first time that I know exactly where I was. I mean, it was it was all with with Harpo. We were first time I heard Van Halen. We were in a, a club called the Cleveland Agora in Cleveland, Ohio, and we had just done our sound check, and they had uh, the, the DJ in, in the back, and I, I remember I'll never forget the first time I heard this. And then the guitar came in, the sound, the the whole thing. I'm going, and, and no idea what it was, who it was. Yep. And I went up to the I went up to the DJ, going, who, who they said it's, it's band out of the West Coast called Van Halen. And after I hear the riffing and the guitar sound, the whole the whole thing, even Roth's vocal was. I'm going, well, boy, shit's just changed right here. And I knew it first time I heard it. <laughs> That band, and then the other band was it was uh, first time I heard Guns N' Roses. We were on tour down the Carolinas. First time I heard Welcome to the Jungle. You ever heard of the band? Ever? They were two two bands that were Oof. so different when yep. they came out from what was out at the time. Yeah, it, but it, but it, but it had that edge. You, and, it, you just know. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm like, you yeah. know, as a music yeah, fan, yeah, and you now, as a musician. Yeah, you now, know. Now it just changed again. You know. I know. And look for appetite I don't even for destruction. Know what the fuck it is huge. now. You oh know? yeah. That's why you asked me, what am I listening to now? Right. I, I, you know, I might be one of those that are, I don't have the time to sit down and, and just listen. To... Right. You were talking about playing out in Cleveland. Um, I think the club is actually, has Harpo ever played Harpo's? No. No? No, that, that's actually in... Uh, is it Chicago? Detroit. No, it's in uh, Michigan. Detroit? Michigan. I think it's Detroit. I think Detroit. I, okay. It might be in Detroit. I always wondered if Harpo ever played Harpo's. No. Because every time I see that, like you'll see a, a, a bootleg... Keel from Harpo's or Armored Saint yeah. from Harpo's. I always think, wonder if Harpo ever played Harpo's. Yeah. Harpo Here, here's a question did, just popped in my head. Who, where did you get Harpo from? Who thought of that? Well, 
You spelled it's, Oprah it's, backwards, it's, didn't it's, you? It's, nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we should have sued that bitch. If no I shit. Have, if, if, if really? I, if I would have had that name copyright, if we would have, you know, known what we were doing, had that name yep. copyright. Well, if, she, if we would have had a copyright, she wouldn't have been able to do, you know, right. she wouldn't be able to use it. But uh, anyway, what happened there was, it's a real simple story. John and I had just, we had moved away from the arrivals thing. As we were growing up, we knew we wanted to go a little bit further with, uh, you know, musically and, and put another band together. And uh, we had this guy that was going to, was going to book us, and the guy that was going to book us played in a band called Harpo Marx Auditorium Memorial Band and Choir. <laughs> God. Jesus Christ. It was like, it was like three a, mouthfuls. Oh, it was like a 10 piece horn band. Right? So you could tell by the they name. They had a word for each each guy. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So, but that's, Can't put that in a t shirt. No. So we got, our, we got our first gig. I think he booked us like, I don't know, some high school or something, and uh, we didn't have a name. And I said, why don't we just call it Harpo? That fucking simple. Boink. And you know what, guys? It's it's not the name; it's what you make it. Sure. I mean, to somebody who never heard it before is not a music fan. Go, what the fucking stupid name that is. But you know, you make it. You know, when you think about the Who, the Beatles, yep. mm-hmm. you're fucking mean, branded it, Harpo, baby. You, you know what I sure. mean? I, I mean, you think of names; yeah. it's it's all what you make it. It's all, yeah. And you who know? did the first logo? That was actually the original logo on the first record. Yes. That was uh, done by an art student out, uh, from Penn State. <laughs> she was uh, a friend of our, our manager, and she did something of some for some school project from from Penn State, really? and she came up with uh, with that streamlined <laughs> logo. Yeah. Because the arm that delivered was then totally different. Yeah, and that and that and that there, I, I came up with the with the Harpo logo here. It made made a little bit heavier as, you know, as we got as we got heavier. Thought, okay, let's change the let's change the logo a little bit. And that's why I, I came up with this kind of lettering with the bolts, bolts with the bolts on it. And um, and I came actually came up with the arm to deliver. I, I wanted it to be like a like a stamp. stamp, stamp, yeah, you know, like on a crate. Bam, yeah. And that's why I came up with that uh, that that idea with with this with the title song of Arm to Deliver. Yeah. And then we just changed logos throughout the years just to you know keep things kind of fresh, for, right? For different shirts and you know. And when Smoking Gun came out, it was more like spray, like spray, spray paint. Yeah. Like like that was a cool. Like, I, was I, cool. I really like that. Like I mean, they're all cool, but I, I really like well, that. Our one. backdrop still is uh, still that, 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 that yep. logo, right? Yeah, and that's the one I remember because I, I remember you have that. Yeah, that shirt, and that was kind of my first experience with Harpo. I still have it, but it's that a shirt. little tight now. Few months later, but yeah, so so we, we did. You know, we changed the logos every now and then. I mean, even just uh, when we start doing reunion stuff, I change the logo just a little bit just for you know merchandising purposes. That so people have something new to you know take home with them. Right. Tell us about the show that's coming up. Well, we're we're excited, man. I mean, shows. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're 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 excited both. It's uh, the, the Front Street Station that we're doing um, October 28th. Uh, it's the first time we've done this room because we always did. Remember, we played the area back in the day. It was when and you guys have been to the Peppermint Lounge mm-hmm. in, in Sunbury. That's always where we played when we played our home area. And John and I are actually from Northumberland, so it's the first time that we're we're actually huh. playing in our, in our hometown. Really? Yeah. So it's it's a nice size nice size room, and uh, we have uh, promoter Travis Fisher, who's because you know now you know with all our day jobs and stuff, we don't really have the time to do the legwork, so we have a promoter for. For this show, who does the Wharf shows, who had a double bill with the Faster Pussycat last year. He's done the Queensryche Lynch Mob. He's at Night Ranger, you know, down there. He does kicks, kicks down there. Kicks play there, yeah. He does kicks down there every year. So we had him promote just to get uh, you know some more some more buzz out for the show. I mean, I'm hoping it, I'm hoping it does well. People seem to want to see it. So we'll, I mean, all we can do is show up and see what happens. Shit, not for nothing. Have have him contact. Uh... M3. You guys would be fucking perfect to play that. Yeah, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? You guys would just... Uh, <laughs> seriously, think about it. I mean, I think that'd, that'd be cool. Um, have them... Seriously, have them look into that. Yeah, see, I don't know if they... Uh, you know, be, be, you know, we, we're not really a you know a label band. I don't... Do they have, like... They, they, yeah, they, they've, they've had... They've had, yeah, like, the, local guys play there. At uh, Street Life Circus, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like it, it may be like a noon on Friday, but it's still right. You know, still a little PR. But that'll be the that'll be the the, the first show, and then uh, with the Woodlands, we're kind of 
Well, with you guys having me here doing the podcast, and uh, we appreciate that. That's going to help get some. Yeah, this will this will be out the day before your first show. Okay, that'll help get the word out. In. And then I did an interview with uh, with the Weekender. That that's going to be a big plus. Plus, we have uh, the ACDC tribute band Halfway to Hell, and they they got a lot of you know fans with those their, guys are good. Um, uh, through their Facebook, so they're helping uh, to promote the show. So so we're expecting to you know. You know, do well to Woodlands too. I hope. I mean, that's the reason why hey, we're doing it. The fans. Three, so the, better, three of the four of us will be here. I'll, I'll be. Uh, unfortunately, you guys are. I will be on the the Kiss Cruise at that at that point. But I will. Well, that sounds like fun. A full. Uh, yeah. So good, great with time. Facebook left. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, he's gonna have of all, such of all good times. service out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> and 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 I gotta say, the last the, the thing that sucks about the last time, last two times I saw you guys, I was sick as a dog both times I saw you guys. Last two times, yeah, I that's saw never you guys. fun. When they played uh, down at the Kirby Center last year, and then the show before that at the the Bruce Brothers. Yeah, because we had a, actually we had a, a bus full of people. That was yeah, there. that Bruce West show was was, was it was coming. great. And that, that's, I that's was a cool rock, so that, sick. That had a cool rock club. Oh, that was real. That was a great that, place yeah, to see a show. The staging was killer. You know, the light, everything. Was, that was as close as you were going to get to the old staircases right. as as you could get. And, and actually, I looked I looked into you know before we you know I decided on the Kirby Center. I looked into doing. The Bruce Brothers West, and I actually talked to the guy who who kind of runs it now. He said, oh, he said, "Yeah, we could we could work on something. It's kind of a banquet room now, and I mean they don't have any bands in there or anything anymore." I'm thinking, well, how the hell is this thing going to get promoted? Right. You know, if you don't you know, if you don't run bands, and you know, I, it was too much of a chance by us going in there when they didn't have hadn't had a band in there, and you know, maybe since we've been since in you there, were there, right? <laughs> could, yeah, yeah, could very well be I mean, last I, show. I, I, you know, I, right. I don't I don't know. Yes, yeah, so I think the last show we saw there was. I want to say Queensryche. Queensryche. Jeff, Jeff I think Tate. Jeff Tate's Jeff Queensryche. Tate. 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 Skin and bones, yeah. Skin and bones. And that was that was a couple. Years well, I actually ago. looked into that because that that was the the perfect setup for you know we do. I mean, the stage was killer and you know good size, good size right. room. And then we got offered to do the Kirby, and, and they and they uh, like it told uh, BB and BC that they were they want us to do the main room at the Kirby, and that's just too big a venue, and I didn't care for the. The seating idea and the whole yeah. nine yards. And I, I yeah, Harpo does not Harpo's lend not to a... uh, having seats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they and I guess they. I don't even know if you're allowed to. Did, are you allowed to drink in the in the main yeah, theater? Yeah, 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 you can. Okay, but you know, it's it's we're we're just not a sit down yes. thing. Get out and <laughs> rock <laughs> your so, ass off. So they offered us do the, the the chandelier lobby, which you know it had a different atmosphere to it. But yeah. I mean, we had we literally had no choice. We're like, where yeah. the hell do we play? Yeah. I mean, it was a great. The only thing I, I didn't like about the, the stage was so low. Yeah, because we were we were kind of like maybe halfway back, and it was tough to see because, you know, we were up, but the stage was was yeah, so I mean, I wonder, low. Is, is the Woodlands a little bit higher stage than that? I mean, I don't know if the Woodlands is going to be much better. Woodlands is, is, is all flat. It's all it's flat. It'll probably be on a you know, I'm six, say it's probably a little bigger, maybe a foot foot, foot higher, rise off the higher, off the yeah. main floor and then. I mean, because I mean, look at the women's. I mean, I mean, they do at least they do a lot of you know. They, they, they do have, at least have shows there. Yeah, they have shows yeah. exactly. They do the Rock One Hundred Seven Bash. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I think the perfect place for you guys to play the ballroom or the casino would probably be about the best around here. That would be cool. They could have seats or not, and right? They have a, a higher stage. It'd be it'd be kind of like playing the stage at the Kirby Center without the seats. Oh, that's where I saw White Snake. Yeah. Yes. That's what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Convention yeah. center or whatever they call it. Yeah. Keystone something. Didn't they used to Keystone. do concerts in the ballroom at the cultural center? Because I think we saw yeah. like bu- a bullet there. Yeah, we yeah. saw a bullet by Valentine. We, we saw Megadeth, Megadeth, Megadeth and yeah. Exodus yeah. there. Yeah, so I mean there's there's choices out there. Yeah. Are there gonna be any shows after these two shows? Yeah, well, actually we're uh I, I know one that we already have locked in for July. We're doing the big uh Harley Fest out in Woolrich in uh in July. And then we're. I was talking to uh, Tom up at uh, Thirsty's. Okay. We can't do the inside; it's too small. I, I, you know, I went up to check him. Oh, nah. <laughs> he, he was disappointed. I was disappointed when I saw him. Like, oh, man. But then he talked about uh, maybe doing an outside thing where they did the rods. Yeah. Right. They get the showmobile there for 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 next year. So Ooh, that'd be great. Yeah. So I'm open to that. It'd be a different uh, different look to see see Harpo and an outside venue and. He took me out and showed me how the setup. I'm like, man, this looks. Yeah. And he showed me some pictures from the Rod show, and I said, yeah. yeah, this this could this now this could work. Absolutely. 
Do you remember? I, I, I know where you're going. I can't remember what year it was. <laughs> Moons ago. He played uh, Plymouth Fire Department Carnival. It was a private show for us. Thank you. Because I think there might have been 15 people. What? There. Yeah, it was probably outdoors. awesome. Like, was it, it was like a fire. Morgan, or was it, was it, it was a couple I, bands, wasn't it? Or was it just. I, I think so. They might have played before yeah. you, but you, you guys were. The, it was a crappy weather day. It rained all day, and it was shit day. But then we showed up, we're like, fuck, there's nobody here, holy shit. You guys came out and fucking ripped it up. Yeah. And you're like, what do you want to hear next? We're play Igniter. <laughs> you played Igniter. Igniter oh, like three God. times. <laughs> did we, did we, what do you want to hear again? Play Igniter again. You guys play, you guys play Igniter again. It was like a private show. We, were, we had a blast. I don't know how we got home. I know. I don't remember who drove. Did you drive? Yeah, but the marathon. You guys had a lot of those nights with Hardboy. You don't remember how we, we, we did. Yeah, we did. You know, and and I said we miss it. We do. You got some of those nights too. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. But that was oh. like a private show because like, and we were like really the only really hardcore hardcore, hardcore fans, fans there. Yeah. there. So like, we what do you guys want to hear? Red Rum. <laughs> you guys kicked in red. I'm like, oh, this is a, it, it, that always stands in my so mind. So it worked. It worked. It worked for you. It, it, <laughs> and, and that's always been our our mentality. It doesn't matter if it's if there's 50 or 500. You know, you gotta you gotta come out and. and and snap and go. You, know, you, you, just, you, you did. You just can't. Because yeah, I mean, we we there's been times where we've gone to CC's. BC and I went the one night, and we got there early, and you guys were working on uh, Pleasure Dome, and there was another new song you guys were working on at Tough the time, love. Tough Love, and. So we we were sat there because remember they used to have the fence uh-huh. for the <laughs> under twenty one crowd. They had the fence. We just kind of we just kind of hung back, and you guys like worked through them songs like three or four times. We just kind of sat back. It was just so cool to. <laughs> Watch you guys, you know, you play for a little bit and stop. Okay, you know, I don't like it, you know, and you guys were working up those songs and it was great. Well, and, that, and that's how that's how we were playing so much. Then that's how in between rehearsals, that's how we were working on new material. We'd be doing it at soundcheck, you know. And and when we were back back in the day when we were touring Canada and playing six nights a week in, in those hotels, we were down in the club in the afternoon, all hung over and shit. <laughs> Rehearsing, working on new stuff. We, yeah, we were rehearsing during the day, and then we'd be playing that night. Whether it be working on our own stuff or working on new covers, or well, you're in Canada in a hotel for a week. What, yeah. have, what the hell else do you have to yeah. do? Yeah, well, get over, get over the night before. But, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't have to be up at nine. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's, but that's how that's how we were working a lot of that's how we were working a lot of stuff. Then was you know. That's great. I mean, just the, the the tightness when you guys are playing so much has to just had to be. We're just we're we're, we're so happy that you, you come to talk to us. I want to talk about some of the songs. We won't keep you for too much longer. We know you have to get on the road. Just another um, like five hours, if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you'll you'll be out. <laughs> we're all right. You'll, you'll make it in time. You'll make it in time for practice. Yes, sir. Let's start with covers. What what covers do you like to play the best? Then we'll get into the good stuff. Well, they all have their own. They, have, they all have their own kind of thing. I mean, right? Some, but is there a song that you just like? I can't wait. Like I really am big playing. I tell you one 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 song that I think Perry Mason. I think you. I, I get I, a good vibe from you on that. Yeah. Song. Well, I, one one song one song that that bends my knees every time we go into it from another song. We always go into it from something before. We never just start right. it dry, and it, it, it bends my knees just about every time. Cashmere, Red Zeppelin. Okay, it's, and usually you end the in the first set with that a lot, right? Or you do the well, Zeppelin. Well, well it, all, it, all, it, all, it all depends, but it just it's just that no matter what we come out of that, that first it, count, that one, two, right. three, four, right. I mean, the drums are just so, you know what I mean? Right. That's that. Just that heavy groove. Right. As simple as that lick is, if you want to call it a lick. But it's just like it just fuck, get man. you. Yeah, I, I just, you guys, that song off the top of my head. Then there's then there's the the, you know, the high energy songs like you know I mean, we do slave to the grind. Or, oh, or, I like when John comes out to sing. Oh yeah, I really like when John comes well, out. You to know, sing. I had I had to I had to talk him in the <laughs> yeah to, oh, really? to actually to actually funk. He he used to stay behind his keyboards. Even if oh. even songs that he wasn't playing keyboards, right? He stayed he, behind his keyboards. And then I, I gradually, because he used to have a B3, which if, if you guys know what a B, it's a, that's a big fucking wooden organ. It used to take four of us to, to lift it up. They had, they had carriers. <laughs> right, they had carriers. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's one that you see in a church. I mean, and, and it's, what's, what's all the bands were using back, right. back in the day. I mean, it's this big wood, it's fucking as big as this table. You know. 
Then he had, you know, then as the electronic stuff, the moogs and, and shit started coming, then he started adding on. So I had him, and he'd be in kind of like a, like a, like a corner. He'd have the B3 here, and then he'd have his other keyboards here. So he'd still be kind of behind stuff. So I had him say, hey, why don't we open it up, have your B3 here, and then have your other keys on the other side. So you're open to the audience. Even, even see they could see you playing. Right, all, you're op right. You're open to the audience instead of being always behind something. Right. So I went from being behind totally to open it up a little bit. Pulling then him out, finally, out of the we, middle of the stage. Finally, then we finally got him, got him out, out front. But yeah, and 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 he's real comfortable with that now. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, boy, he's he's singing better than ever. Really? Yeah, and, I mean, and that's hard. That's hard to do with uh, it. with what age it. we're getting at. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. How's the how's the energy at these? At what do you practices? think? Do you, do you, They've got to be. It's got to be incredible. Do you it's think, got to be think, incredible. Do you think Billy Rock's now, now standing you, there just tapping his foot? No, or, 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 <laughs> what, what I'm getting at is like, did you, when you guys first got back in to practice, how long did it take for you to just, all of you to just be playing and just kind of look around at each other and like everybody's just smiling? We probably, we probably could have played this out the second rehearsal. Really? And, and, oh. and, and been... Better than most bands. I believe it. And that's not that's not ego. That's no, just no, 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 no. I believe it. <laughs> it's got to be. Yeah, it's just got to I mean, be an incredible feeling. It's, just it's know not, you're you're just locked in. You're like, just it's locked like, in. It's like riding a bike. And we, you and haven't we, been on a bike in six we, years. You get back in the we bike. Pedal the fuck out of it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Put a little yeah, extra I mean, oil on the chain. I mean, we, we started with all our, our all our original stuff, like uh, you know, all our mainstay stuff. That's that's what when we when we first got together. Because we didn't start rehearsing until. See, in July, August. I mean, we're we're only. Uh, I'd say we we've, we've rehearsed maybe a half a dozen over the last two months. Does it make you miss it more once you started back up? Oh, I, I loved it. I mean, if I didn't, if I wasn't, I mean, and, and not only not only from my end of it, I wouldn't love it. If we weren't all on the same page of the passion for it, then we wouldn't. You know, right. it, it's not about. I don't know, yeah, let's you know. No, it's it's all about the, you know, the passion, and then the, the combination of passion we have and the passion the fans still have, and that that combined is is what uh, what drives this whole thing. Like the first time we got together, I mean, there's a couple of things we were like, well, oh yeah, that's right, you know. I did. I mean, everybody right. came in pretty prepared, but until you actually get together, right? Live but you're still going to have that little little bit of rustiness, right? There, right? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. But uh, yeah, yeah, by the second or third rehearsal, we could have any any deep harpo cut coming out this. This he can't world. reveal that. You, you gotta go see the show to find out. Stop. Like, like any, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Anything for Marv to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> we hear the guitar and the bass. Yeah, I didn't play the bass on that. There's some kind of little Billy Sheehan stuff. Double. As soon as that comes double out, hammering, like, the double hammering stuff. Oh, you know, on there. But yeah, there. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's, there's one or two things that you probably haven't heard. For a while, you're gonna go. Oh fuck! I haven't See, there that. you go. Don't ruin it for everybody, BB. Yeah. Come on. That's that's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I won't. I won't. I won't tell you. No, what, no, when, no, when no, you, no, no, you, no, no. Just wondering. Just wondering. When, when you hear the, you know, that's how I go. Oh yeah. There's always gonna be a surprise. I've heard this in a decade. I gotta say, it's got to be an incredible feeling to just be up on the stage there. You're playing a song that that you wrote, and that you're singing. And here's knuckleheads like us out there singing it right back to you. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that that it's feeling awesome, that is just it's just gotta be. It's awesome. awesome. Actually it makes incredible. the kinda of makes the hair stand in my arm just talking about it. Really? Now. That's it's just because, gotta be because, incredible. I can see in your face the yeah. you know, the passion that you have but just you know, every time you know, every times I lost my voice screaming, "Evil breeds oh. evil." Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> well, like we we go out and see you guys, and I'd have to work at the firehouse next day, beat down because if if Edwardsville jitterbugs, we go see you guys there. That's a good, probably almost an hour ride for us right. to get home. So you're leaving there at two o'clock in the morning, back home at three, maybe unless you go to Denny's or something like that. <laughs> so then you're 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 to work at eight. And you walk in this, and you're just like, uh, "Hey, what's happening?" Like, you know. Then I got to, you got to call, you got to go, and you got to talk on the radio. And you're I like, mean, I, think I, I think I, me and Lloyd sound the next day. I tell you what, I'm, 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 I'm a fucking noodle the next day. Now there, there's no way we could do back to back. Right. Nice. Not, not with what energy 
you know, we that you know we we do and you know vocally and you know what uh, physical energy. I mean, I, I may not quite do everything I was able to do back in my twenties. Who can? Life, but you know? uh, it's it's still it's still a, a live in your face kick ass rock show, and when it stops doing that. None of you guys are going to know it. None of the other fans are like, we'll know it before anybody else knows it. Then right. we go, okay, and we've we've done our we've done our thing. We've run the string out yeah. here. Mm-hmm. But uh, as, as long as it still feels feels good and and still have that fuck yeah, let's let's go do what we do. Right. We we we're really gonna, hope gonna, to, to see keep, much keep more of it. you guys. I mean, we we just mm-hmm. well, and I and I'll tell you what, you'd be you'd probably be seeing more of us even this year if there was more opportunity more out there. More places to play. I'm, right. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I mean, we've had offers. I believe it absolutely. We've had offers to go to, uh, you know, even. I mean, last year when we did, we did some shows. We did Buffalo, New York, and then we were scheduled to do. Uh, uh, it used to be the Penny Arcade in in Rochester, and uh, and John got sick. We had to cancel. He had got had, had to cancel that show. He ended up in the hospital for a couple of days. He had a, a blocked bowel, and it actually happened the night before we were going to go to to really? Rochester, New York. So I mean, there's still some demand. Out there, even okay. out, of the, out of the state of Pennsylvania, I mean, uh, there's a club in uh, Erie. They want us to do Sherlock's out out in Erie. That we we were a mainstay out there for years. We used to do a run that we'd go from Cleveland, and it was like a hop, skip, and a jump. Cleveland to Erie, to Buffalo, uh, and they even hit but like Batavia, New York, in which has been between Buffalo and Rochester. Right. Then hit Rock. I mean, it's like boom, boom, boom. All of they're like sixty miles and ninety miles. And right. I mean, that's how. You know, our, our agent would, uh, you know, we worked with a couple of different agents and they would, and there was so much opportunity out there. Now it's, t- it's tough for us to, to go to other clubs, especially out of state, because we don't really know what's going on in some what's of these clubs. There. You know, if you throw up some Harpo posters and how much promotion is going to be done, because we're not there to, you know, to control all that. Is it going to be enough to, to bring bodies, you know, into the room? But right. I, I, I don't know, we see it on Facebook all the time. You know, when we when we first uh, put these shows out there, it was like, well, well, where's Rochester? Well, where's Erie? Well, where, you know, all the fans right. from, you know, and there, there's fans all over out there, but is it going to be worth the... Easy to the, get it together. Well, yeah, because it's, it's, you know, for us, it's five hours to Erie. It's five hours to Buffalo. We need rooms, and, I mean, there's, there's an expense going on there, oh, yeah, sure. too, that, uh, you know, it's just not, like I said, there'd be more shows if there was more opportunity. Even even mm-hmm. up here, I was I was bummed that uh, that Bruce Brothers West wasn't doing anything. Yeah, that was a good place. Yeah, that, that, that was for sure. But there again, it just wasn't enough to keep things going. Right. I mean, if if people were going out to see bands, I told these guys I saw Rev Theory there. You know, a couple of years before, I don't even know if it was a couple of years before we we did the show in 2012, and I bet there wasn't 150 people in the place. I know it's it's it, it's sad the state of. Music, live, live music. music. Yeah, yeah, live music. It, it is. It's, yeah, it, it is. It sucks. It is. It is. It, so that's why we, you know, we, right now, it's like, you know, we'll, we'll do a local show, and we always, you know, always treat us well up here in the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area. And, and again, it was all from the exposure, from the exposure back in the day when people were out and about, man. I mean, you go into a club, didn't matter who was playing, there'd be 200 people on the place 10 o'clock. It didn't, people it didn't went matter out. who. People left their house. Playing. People actually left their house. And then if you were really good, you were doubling and tripling that. If you were going to, you know, and, and you were playing here and then playing here and then it's playing here. It's a Friday night. Where then next thing you yeah, know, all, all, these, right. all these clubs are going, who's, who's this fucking Harpo? I just heard, right. they, I just heard that they played, you know, Tomatoes and, and Archibald. They heard they're, you know, and then they, they this club wants us. And then, well, who's that? Now we're, now we're playing over here. And you next thing you know, we used to play the staircase, the original staircase in Pittston. The place would be reserved, sold out before we even got there. They, they'd reserve it, the, the right. whole up the whole stair would to, Upstairs, totally too. reserved. Yep. That held two hundred. Yep. Yeah. Because there used to be nights where where we would go out <laughs> mid mid nineties or even before that late eighties mid nineties where it would be. Who do you want to see tonight? Exactly. Yeah. Who do you want to see? Well, look at the weekender now. Weekend is this, you know, it looks like a little fucking I know. weekend like used to be this yeah, big and huge. that, that I thick. Know. It'd be like, oh, do we want to see Harpo? I mean, Harpo was always the, yes, if you guys were playing. But it, if you weren't, there was like five other bands you can go see. You can go see Free Fall or oh, yeah, I mean, you or when whoever. The, when the, the boys were, I mean, back when yeah. we first when we came up here, the boys were the, the big Yep. The big thing. That was when it was the, it was the boy. Then it was this band called Star who we had. The, we ended up with the same, with the same management. And I tell you what, they got they got all. It was it's funny because they got all kind of pissy because we kind of stepped into their, 
in the ground. We were from out of the area. We just kind of came in and we just took over the scene. Took over. But you know mm -hmm. why? Because we were we were something different. You know, people had, right. they they had kind of run their run their course. They were more of a commercial top four. More of a really pop, good, pop type but really stuff. really good. And then you know, then we came in with uh, you know early the early ACD that had all the energy and just you know shook people up and spit them out and uh, like what the fuck just happened? I just <laughs> yeah, my ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Now, as far as original material, what's your personal favorite song? Probably the song I I, I like to not so much as far as playing it, but telling the story is Red Rum. Red Rum. I just listened to that today. If, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't know if he can. I mean, it, it's hard to depict all the lyrics, just like any song. It's right. Like, but uh, that that's that story is The Shining. That's that's what that. If if you listen to the lyrics, right. Many bands have tried it. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, it's uh, that's that's probably the the story. Whenever we do that song, that story, because I was uh, and I've it's I in told your head. Yeah. I, told, I told the story live. Uh, you know, uh, Stephen King. I was a big Stephen King. Fan and, and when I saw the the, the shining of something just this clicked and I ended up uh, writing the lyrics to Red Rum. I knew it had to be something. The music had to be some kind. It could be happy, you know. Four, right. You know, four four straight ahead rock had to be something kind of that. Uh, they had that uh, little uh, darkness uh, to it. Just that stomping. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? It just right. had to have that kind of a little bit of a you know dark side to it. But that's that's probably you know when I tell the story, it's, I'm actually. I'm not just singing the words. It's 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 always a story. It always comes off to me as, as I'm telling a story. I like that. And and you guys and I think um, hearts cold. I love when Heavy. you guys play that because the it's it's atmospheric when it starts. Yeah. And you guys always have the the smoke comes out and yeah. you have the, so the, the keyboards intro. in the beginning, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you get you know the and it's the song that builds up. And I, I've always liked that in songs. That was always one of my favorite Harpo songs. That just Did like it has that atmosphere that's, to that's it. That's the song that Howard Stern up. debuted on his show. That's why he really? got, That's why he got the credit. He got one of the credits on the on the Liver album. Really? Yeah. He he Dave, uh, Wade Perry was was our manager, and he uh, he got uh, got him to, to to debut Hearts Cold on his on his radio show. That that was uh, eighty. I think it was eighty eight. Right more. Might have been even in eighty seven. Right after that. Right after the album was released. That's great. I, I absolutely love that song. BC, what do you what, what do you got? Favorite Harpo song? Come on, oh my dig God. dig deep here. I can yeah, dig. I mean, arm to deliver. Arm to deliver. I mean, that comes on. I, I, and I always said, why don't they do it live? Yeah. Billy, Billy, <laughs> Billy, Billy, Billy explained it to me before. I said, okay, I can respect that. Yeah, I've, I've never played. I've never played the bass. Song. I was, I was like I said, I played. You're guitar, guitar player the, back then, yeah. At that time, and probably a lot of people or a lot of the fans that, that listen uh, you know, to this, uh, you know, podcast once you once you get it edited and everything are going to. Billy go. played guitar. He played guitar. <laughs> See? Yeah, he, a lot of a lot of our fans. A little Harpo right. history coming out. Today. And I've only and I've only seen you once. Night Ranger. Well, play guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Night when you open for Night Ranger. Yeah. That's that's the only because I remember it was, it was Harpo. Night Ranger, the Great Rock Scare. Yeah, and I think there was one other band. I think that was like ah, I'm like. Like we were, and they, I remember going back to the station and partying with all the Night Ranger boys. Was, really? Yeah, that's that's where we all hung out. That was a great show. That was yeah. just a, that was one of my favorite shows, and that was a great place for for a show too, Rocky Glen. Is that the only time you guys played there? Yeah. Was it? How many shows have they had? How long has that been gone? Now? Oh God, that's it's all burned down now. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that burned down like six times. I think that place. You guys, we saw Cinderella there. Bon Jovi, bon Jovi played, there. played there. Rat, Rat Ted Sabotage. played there. Sabotage, uh, Quiet Ride, and Keel. Oh, yes. But like the Night Ranger, and the Night Ranger was just starting to oh, really snap. hit big. And, yep. and I remember seeing you guys, and and I never even heard of you guys then. So that had to be, I think it was Seven Wishes, maybe. That that was for. I want to say yeah. No, I, was, was I, I think no. I think it was before the arm. I think it was before the arm deliver. This is eighty seven. But, but it was okay. Yeah, that was eighty seven, and it wasn't long after we played. No, you know what? It might have been eighty five because I want to say eighty five. I I had a we had a scene Van Halen, and I had a Van Halen painter's hat. Remember the painter hats right. they had out, uh -huh. and some fuckhead stole it off, fucking tore it right off my fucking head I'll give during the right show. Right. I was pissed. That hat was so fucking cool. So if you're out there listening, to this fuck you, buddy. Um, <laughs> Go but, on my painter's hat. But it back. was at that show, so it had to be. It had to be. Around, it was right after we saw Van Halen, so I think we saw Van Halen in like eighty. It had to be eighty four. Well, so speaking of hats, <laughs> you know the infamous "Get the fuck out" hat. I'm sure you guys are yes. familiar with yeah. that. 
how I got that was we were doing uh, the Sherlock's in Erie and Skid Row. I don't know if it was the same night we had played and then they, or the fans of ours came from the show or they were there in, within that week or the week before or whatever it was. And uh, this guy came in with this Skid Row get the fuck out hat. And he's out in the he's out in the crowd and the place is fucking packed and I see this hat. I'm, I want that I hat. I want that fucking hat. Took it off his head, fucking threw it up at me. <laughs> really? You gotta still, you the power. still have it. I gonna say I, you, still, I still break it out. I, yeah. I, 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 so, yeah, I I've it's seen that to. show on dozens of oh, God. had on dozens yeah, of shows you guys. It's gotta it's it. gotta be it's gotta it's gotta be out. It's gotta that's it, gotta make the scene. I mean there's there's no definitely there's no Billy Rock without the cowboy hat or the, the cowboy, cowboy. I was say the cowboy hat's yeah. the other the other mainstay. Yeah. And and I gotta say, when you guys used to play tomatoes, the old man that owned the place. Francie. 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 God rest his soul. Yeah. Harpo would play Get the Fuck Out from Skid Row at the end of the set, at the end of the night. And he would literally be standing in front of Billy when Billy said, Get the fuck out. He'd be saying, Stop saying that. Stop saying that. Right in front of him in the middle of the show. Like we talked before. I said, He thought he was throwing everybody out of the place. And he wanted people to stay. Or he just didn't. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he's just a cranky old man. Or, or a combination yeah. of both. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? And that guy, Billy, he hated me in BC. I think he hated everybody. But like he he, <laughs> he would single us out. We walked through the door. You two, you, you two are trouble. Yeah. We're like, what the? Like we just <laughs> walked in the fucking door because he's wearing a mega death shirt. That's why. Well, he had a Harpo shirt on that night. Grant, I got punched in the face at the Harpo show. There. I got punched in the face. Oh, I know. BC had a lot of drama at your shows. Hey, at least you were never roofied at a Harpo show. I was never roofied at a Harpo show, guys. Oh, I've God. been punched in the face oh, twice, God. thanks to Shane. even the long ride home from Sunbury. You weren't roofy that night. Yeah, I made out with you. Though. That's right. I think we did. Were you, were you guys at the at Jitterbugs when we recorded some of the, uh, the live tracks album? for the live album? We were at both shows. You were both. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, we, we, we drove to Sunbury, and that night <laughs> it was us three here and our buddy Girth. So we went out there. So the deal was these guys would drink, and I would drive home. So we're out there for the live recording. So we drive. And we drink. one of your fellow fans, Little John. Little John. Little John. He was about seven foot tall. <laughs> he was this uh, huge guy. He picked and we were waiting in the line to go to the bathroom. And he literally picked the both of us up and was jumping up and down with us. He's, he grabbed us like this. He's going up and down. I'm just like... <laughs> So he's, he's telling us, if anybody fucks with you guys, you're going to have to fuck with me. And they're like, okay, cool. Thank you. So we know a little job. awesome yeah. show you guys played. So we're driving home. Gertz was my co-pilot because he couldn't fit in the back seat. We had BB's Sunfire. So it had a, thank God it had a sunroof. So we're driving home. Gertz like, I'll be your co-pilot. He was asleep before he even got out of Sunbury. <laughs> so now you know the drive from Sunbury to here where we are tonight. Everybody's asleep. And I'm like, and it's foggy as fuck out. And I'm, I'm like trying to stay awake. So I had the sunroof open. I had my hand out the window, out the sunroof, blowing cold air on my face. These BC and BB, they're in the back of their t-shirts, huddled in. We're fucking trying to keep trying warm, to keep fucking warm. loaded. We're loaded. <laughs> fucking Harpo loaded. And, the, and, oh. and, and we stayed and bullshitted with you guys at the end of the show. So we didn't leave there until, I think, probably like 3.34 in the morning. So it was literally light when we got the sun home. was coming up. And I had to work at the firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> that morning, I was just shot. And those guys, you know, they it jump out of the car and go home and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a hardcore show to me. Yeah, it right? was. Right? It was. It was worth every second oh, of it, though. Man. But yeah, that that uh, to be honest with you, that's that's one of uh, that. I don't know how many live albums you guys have heard, which I've heard, I'm sure you've heard many. But that thing, I tell you what, for uh, for it's it, produced. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and we didn't we didn't tweak nothing. Maybe a little EQ. We didn't add any guitars. We didn't do we didn't do literally anything maybe, except maybe tweak a few levels here or there. But uh, for a live album, for a, it's it's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's got it's got the low end. The drums are. I mean, it's. I've heard a lot of on a national level live recordings that are thin and 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 don't have all you gotta balls. say is oh, yeah. listen to listen to Slaughter's live album. Oh, good. It sounded like it was recorded in a tin can, and here's a, a you know a band that sold millions yeah. and millions of albums, yeah. and it, it does it will only <laughs> even hold a, a birthday candle to to your guys' live. Yeah, album. yeah, I'm, I'm proud. And I'm seriously not saying that kissing your ass. Yeah, I'm, but I'm proud. Listen to that live album, and it, it's 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 fucking terrible. But like your guys, it, it's great, and 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 we we kind of made a pact, like because you guys, I think, announced it a couple shows before. Hey, we're gonna be recording. This night here, and then this night here, and we're like, this night here, and no, it's we're going to both uh, shows. We're going to both fucking shows. Yeah, 
And, that, and that's all. That's all we needed was. I mean, t- two two shows, and and actually, I think the bulk of it we we kept probably from jitterbugs. I mean, remember remember Blind Lute Sambuca. Blind Lute Sambuca out of harmonica. Yeah. yeah. I cool. mean, I, I listen to those uh, that riffs. Not only his harmonica, but you listen to Lloyd's keyboard riffs in that blues song. All that is is a jam. I mean, yeah. we're, we're just jamming. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll never forget how I ran into him. There was a local pub, and they had uh, open mic night. It was like a Wednesday or Thursday night, and uh, I'd go up and, and just hang out, just to hear different musicians and stuff. It's a small little shitty club called the Arm Bar in Milton, and this guy gets up and he has this like little suitcase. I didn't know what the fuck he was. Like, what the fuck is he pulling out of there? Opens up, he's got like I don't know a dozen harmonicas, and I could see him from from the from the back of the room. And he pulls out and he says, "But what key are you guys in?" And he pulls the harmonica. I'm like, "Wow!" Oh. And he starts riffing. He comes off the the stage, and I went over and talked. And this is when we already knew we were going to be doing these two live recordings to for this live right. album. So I walked up, never met the guy, and I said, "Hey," I said, "I'm, I'm Billy from from Harper." Oh, he knew the band, right? He goes, I, said, I said, "Hey," I said, "We're going to be doing this." live recording in, in Sunbury if, if we end up with a, some good enough tracks we're gonna it's gonna make a live CD I said would you want to you know be interested in, in coming down and sitting in for a jam I just like like a blues jam and he's real casually and he was dressed to the night you don't do you remember how he do you remember oh how yeah, he right. white yeah. With the, yep. yeah yeah it was like he was getting out of stage in New Orleans or yeah something. right yeah. yeah so uh yeah, I says oh yeah he says uh, I said, well, we rehearsed out at my house. I said, uh, you want to come out? I said, well, at least get the, you know, get a format. So we didn't just you know, do it just straight out right. cold. See who was going to riff when, what's like, you know. Right. He comes out to my house, and I said, okay, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start with, uh, I forget what the what the lineup is, but it started with guitar. I think it started with harmonica, and then keyboard, and then guitar, and then went back and forth for a couple rounds. And we went through it once after we had the layout and just jammed through it. I said, uh, we need to do it again? He looks at me and goes, why? <laughs> that was it. That was it. That, that was it. And he said, I'll, I'll see you in Sunbury. And I remember, oh I, remember, I remember him walking in with his white suit. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, with the, with the, with the, yeah. With the, with the, yeah. It was either that or the, the guy that does the 7 Up commercials. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that's, and that's how I, that's how I came across him. I thought, oh, yeah, that was great. Be, yeah. And it was, but it was, it was so much different for you guys to, to see you guys do something like yeah. that. Yeah, I thought, well, if it, make, if, it makes the, if it makes the CD cool, if it doesn't, it, it, it'd be just cool to... But it was still cool, cool even if it, like, like you that. said, even if it didn't, yeah. it was still something like, holy shit, you know, we saw Harper last night, this dude got up and played our mic. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But I mean, it, listen to all the, the harmonica, Riffin's killer, John's keyboard and organ solos in it, and, and, and Chris, you know, he goes from, he has some little Stevie Ray Vaughan licks in there, right. and, and some, you know, real technical riffs and... I mean, all the riffing in there is that just, was that was just, that was a great it's just great, killer great yeah, thing. yeah I'm, I'm proud of that uh, yeah that never really represented what we do live or represented you know I mean because all, all our all our recorded albums didn't quite capture what we are live everything was much stronger even though everybody dug what was on the record live live was, is that live is where you got to see it live is where you got to see exactly it. so that's why you know I came up with the idea to, to do the like, we ought, to do a, we ought to do a live album. It's, get it recorded, and if, if it's good enough, fine. If it doesn't, well, then we don't release it. Because we're, we're definitely uh, proponents of, of live music on this show. I would rather go see live live anytime. And people are like, oh, my God, it didn't sound like the album. If you want to hear the album, stay the stay fuck home. home. Yeah. And yeah. listen to the album. Yeah. I mean, because that's, you, you want it, you want it warts and all, like they say. You know, you just, it's it's live music. It's it's not made to be played in perfect. The, what last five six years easily? How many shows we go to? Oh, there's something better on it. This is live. It ain't, it ain't your fucking. It ain't the yeah. CD. If you want us the CD, say the fuck home. Like now, see, we were all we were always, in my opinion, better live than than what represented the the, the songs were represented on on the recording. It always. Oh, sure. It's a different. Me. It's a different level. Yeah, it, it, it translates better. better. Well, yeah. and, and I tell you what, not all bands can. Some bands aren't. As uh, good I know. Like, We've seen some bands, seen and you're like, yeah, mm, dude, it's yeah. like you're not pulling it off. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah there are there are bands that uh, don't. Yeah, because we've gone out a couple times, and like they'll play. We'll be on the second. We'll be kind of looking at each other, going like, guys, <laughs> not working. But you guys <laughs> just are, are locked in. The, but you could you could tell when you guys play live that you're you're having a good time, that you're really in, you're enjoying the fans, you're enjoying you're enjoying playing with each other. Yeah. I've never seen a Harpo show where anybody's mailed it in. 
No. Oh. And no. we've seen dozens of. Oof. I mean, you you know how many shows we've been at. Yeah. We just saw uh, we just saw Quiet Riot. Oh, good. Maybe a month, month and a half ago. Frankie Benelli played great. Singer did great. Truck right and bass played great. Alice Gross on guitar totally mailed it in. Looked wow. like he wanted to be any place else but on that fucking stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, it showed. And, that, and we yeah, were like, and that what the fuck? What everybody, yeah, always, it it brought them. everybody else down. Yeah. It really, it, it really it, brought it really everybody did. else down. And he he played great, but you could tell he was just going through the motions. I, gotta, I mean, I the crowd wasn't here. huge, but you know what? You guys played in front of yeah. like ten of us and yeah. played like you played the fucking Madison Square Garden. Yeah, that's and, what I mean. You can't, you can't. You can't do that. All it takes is one, and people and you notice. Like, like you guys, you notice. You, you do. You do. We're like, I don't dude, care how big like, or small you are, you fuck? notice that. The last two songs, the crowd came alive. You know, because they played the Mental hits. Mental health and, and yeah. come on, feel the noise, and all of a sudden everybody's going to jump around. And, but nobody come wanted to jump around. Even their song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, and and for me, I wish they'd play songs like that in the middle. So you can go take a piss, <laughs> yeah. and not miss not miss anything good. Yeah. Listen, you can leave early, you know. And, and that's like True. I would love to see Harpo play just like a whole right straight through show. But it is cool to see you guys do different sets because you're not leaving in the middle of a set to get even get a beer or take a piss or whatever. You're you're there for the set, so we yeah. would probably sometimes get two or three beers a piece. Put them in our pockets and have <laughs> in our pockets or whatever, you know, yeah. and, and just. So well, we that's what, that's don't have to leave while you guys are playing. Yeah, yeah, we're doing the same format, too. We're doing we're having the opener, and then we're doing two sets. It's a break for us as well as it's a break for the crowd to, you know, and, and, and we like to, you know, get out and, you know, get, out and, hang. Yeah, get out and hang with the with the crowd a little bit as, as well. But these, it is, it's a nice having a break because, you know, we do, they're, they're, they're strong hour sets. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's and that's a lot of and it, and it, you know how we got it's it's just yeah, it's yeah just there's boom. there's you're not playing any ballads it's, it's the a, closest it, you get to it is screaming the and, night with crocus yeah and there's no there's no and that's not even really a, song. It's, it's, a ballad, it's boom ballad. boom boom yeah. and from one song into another it's 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 a freight train just rolling and look the we've been run over by that train many many several 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 times definitely definitely. At this point, we're gonna we're gonna start wrapping it up. And uh, Billy, give us give us your shameless plug of your shows here. Well, October twenty eighth. Uh, this uh, be a week from today. Well, I don't know when this is going to air. If I, if the, with the Friday before on the twenty seventh. This will be out on the twenty seventh. Okay. Well, then it'll be tomorrow the, night. The next day, the twenty eighth. Yep. And we're down at the Front Street Station in Northumberland. Uh, there will be no presale tickets for. Oh, there are presale tickets for that because uh, it's uh, promoted by Fisher Promotions. Um, and then on the Saturday, November 4th, we're at the Woodlands Grand Ballroom with uh, the ACDC tribute band, Halfway to Hell. And there are no pre-sale for that. That'll be a $15 admission at the general admission at the door. Doors open at 8, Halfway to Hell at 9. And then Harpo roughly probably 10, 10.30-ish, something like that. Till we... Till we decide to stop. <laughs> till they throw you the fuck out. Til, yeah, yeah till they tell Billy you get the fuck out. Billy says get the yeah, fuck out. Till I say the party's over. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so awesome. Um, VB, final words from you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, like, how many times have, have we sat around here, hey, remember the Harpo time with this? How many times are Harpo, there's so many Harpo stories. How did we get home? And from a fan, thank you. It's unbelievable. The shit you do, the shit you put out, the way you make us feel when we're out there. Keep doing what you're doing, buddy. Thank you, thank man. You. I'll tell you what, and thank you guys for having me. It, it's been a it's been a blast hanging out, chatting. It's it's easy to chat with passion of fans like yourselves. Makes it easier for me to even tell my stories because I know you guys are, are up for and really into hearing what I have to say. And and uh, it's all about fans like yourselves is why we keep plugging along. And you guys are the reasons, man. Fans, fans, all about the fans. And thank you so much for having me here. It was a blast. Awesome. BC, uh, like, what do you got? Like BB said, I mean, the memories we have, I mean, <laughs> we're going to be in a nursing home one day. Hey, remember that time Harpo? <laughs> well, you know, right, right, guys, it's almost like when you come to a Harpo show, it's almost like a reunion of, of yeah, fans. Exactly. Sure, it is. Yeah. You, yeah. See, you see right. people you haven't seen since the last yeah. Harpo show. I mean, it, it, it's it, like you only seen them last week. It really is. You, you don't you see pick up where you left you, off. You may go yep. see other other uh, you know bands and, and whatever. Like it's it's not like coming to a Harpo show. You come and you see the the fans that were dedicated then and, and they're dedicated now, just like yourselves. And again, that's why we keep keep doing keeping it. on. And I, I definitely want to say, <sighs> Billy, thank you and. 
Chris and John and Rich. Rick. My name's not Rick! Rich. Rich. Rich, I'm sorry. Why do I keep <laughs> fucking that up? I'm, and I know that. I just keep fucking it up. I'm sorry. Rich, when you see him, punch Rich, him in the face. I'm very sorry, okay? That's just that's just me. I'm just fucked up. I had a... I had a Rough day. I knew it was coming. I know. I know. I know. I saw your wheels turn. I saw your wheels turn. I know the guy is editing gonna, this show. I was, gonna, I was even going to say it before you said it. I thought, no, well, no he's, he's thinking it. about it. At least you didn't say Kyle. Was Kyle the other drummer? Kyle. Yeah. yeah. Kyle. At least you didn't say Kyle. Yeah. See? Oh, that, okay. that, now that would have been bad. You got okay. most of the letters no, right. No, that I know. That yeah. I know. I, I just want to thank you guys for, for your, your great albums, your great music, your great shows. And I do have to say, absolutely love the Harpo stuff but I also have to say about the covers that you guys do and you can ask Dylan my son and you can ask my wife anytime any song that you guys play whether it be Perry Mason or Screaming in the Night or Harpo does a great version Hellion, of that. I'm like I'm like that's a fucking Harpo song <laughs> yeah. like, like you in my mind have made those songs Harpo oh. songs like all those songs I hear I'm just like that's a fucking Harpo song and even if it's a song that you know you guys did years ago and hadn't done, oh, I'm like, that is oh, that's a fucking that hardball song. That's amazing. We yeah. do that all uh, the time. Because I, I was going to Philadelphia, my my girlfriend, and she has the hearing nation. Yeah. And screaming, and I comes right. up. I'm like, fucking Harpo. Yeah. And she's like, what? It says Crocus. I said, no, it's fucking Harpo. <laughs> yeah. And I explained to her, and she's she didn't get it. And, and that, <laughs> a lot, you know, I mean, we've seen, I won't okay. say hundreds, I'll say dozens of of bands that do cover songs and. and you don't even think of that at all, but I mean, you guys, you guys make them your own. And and I was listening to uh, Too Much Is Not Enough today, and I still have to say my my personal favorite Harpo song is Igniter. Oh yeah, I absolutely wow. fucking love that song. Yeah. And when you guys, we were talking about that show in Plymouth, you guys did that like three times. That was yeah, awesome. I, yeah, right, we, I was like, <laughs> what do you fuck, that is so fucking and, awesome. And, and, yeah, that's something we haven't done live in a, in a long time. That was probably the last so time. So, food for thought for thirsties <laughs> yeah, right, for right, the summertime. Yeah. Well, I, get a, I get a text the fuck out of you when you're going to play that show. <laughs> and I'm just going to text you maybe once or twice a week, Igniter. And that's all you're going to see from me. Never say never. All right. So, I, I just want to say from all of us, thank you, Billy, for coming up and hanging out with us. And you guys get out there tomorrow night and see Harpo for their, their first uh, show coming back. And then... The next weekend will be at the um, Woodlands. at the Woodlands in Wilkesbury. You November guys get out 4th. and check these guys out. If you have not checked out Harpo before, get out there and check these guys out. They kick some serious fucking ass. <laughs> I'll drink to that. And, <laughs> put put and your fucking phone Billy down drinks and Jack Daniels. Live music. Sambuca for Chris. Sambuca for for John. No, Sambuca. Sambuca for Chris. Stolies for Stolies for John. Yeah, yeah. Of course, like, of course, like Stolies for in the Rich. Back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, yeah. All right. Yeah. I finally got it on the last time. All right, you guys. Uh. One last thing. On three, give me a Harpo music. One, two, three. Harpo, Harpo music. music. Guys, was that awesome or what? Oh my God, <laughs> Billy Harpo music. <laughs> Just, Amazing. Um, and I, I just want to say thanks to Billy for coming. He he actually drove about an hour and 45 minutes each way to, to come and hang out with us. And um, I missed the, I won't say the best part of the evening, but it may ha may well have been. He met uh, BC and BB and Dylan, and they those guys got something for dinner. I had a engagement that I had to be at. And, um, you got engaged, right? Huh? No, I, no. Okay. <laughs> engagement. <laughs> and um, what would you would you guys think? It was just it, it was great having him here. He's a great guy, and I, I like that kind of interview where you just ask a question and you just boom, let them go. What, what do you what do you think, BC? I mean, I don't know. The time just flew by. I, I didn't realize it. Maybe I got lost, but I mean, here's a guy you could talk to, and 12 hours can go by, and it seems like it's an hour. But awesome guy down to earth. Yeah, really, uh, Billy. Thank you for coming on the show. Like Steve said, going you know, almost two hours one way just to come and talk to us jackasses. It, it, it it's really really nice for him to come out and so you guys got to get out and uh, see their show down at the Woodlands November fourth. Go out there and hear a little harpo and music. And playing Northumberland also. Yeah, it's it, it's it's a man with experience. Oof. The the stories he had uh. to tell and all the all the places he's been, the bands he's played with. Uh -huh. Come on, you, you can't get a better person on the show to talk about. Yeah, and it, you know, and it's it like Dylan just said, it's not, it wasn't just uh, about Harpo. There's a lot of other bands involved, and 
members in other bands, and and it was great. We we love we love Billy, we love Harpo, and they're such a great live band. And as we talked about in the interview too, they're very approachable guys. They take breaks in their sets, and they will come out and just hang with the you know uh, with us crazy fans out there. And we just we just really loved having them on the show. And the show that they're playing in. Um, Northumberland is at the the Front Street Station on October 28th. With the, if, if you're listening to this on the day we release it, the show is tomorrow night. You guys, if you're in the area there or if you're within reasonable driving distance, go see these guys. You will not be sorry. Just the the original music they have is incredible. If you're a fan of hard rock or, or metal, and even the covers they do are, are just phenomenal. You guys, we talked about some of the songs they do in that. So they will be playing the Front Street Station in Northumberland on October 28th and go check those guys out. Harpo Music. That's, you know, that yeah. that's pretty much all I I have to say with that. And um and we will have Billy back on at a, at a later date cuz we talked about doing some other stuff with Billy also. So right now um we're not even going to do hidden gems this week. We're going to do something a little different this week. I'm going to ask these guys uh what are we listening to now? I know we listen to a lot of different stuff doing research for the show and prepping for the show. Um, what are we listening to besides stuff that's on the show? Dylan, what are you, what are you listening to? Well, besides the off-format music I'm listening to that I won't mention because it'll bore everybody to death on this podcast. Thank uh, you. I'm, I'm actually listening to, <laughs> to a little Volbeat recently. Volbeat. Maybe it's to, to fill the void in my heart that was made when I couldn't really hear them when we saw them at I know. Open for Metallica. but They look like they sounded good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like They... I've been going through their catalog, and honestly, they have some really rocking albums. They do. Uh, I really love the newest one, Seal the Deal and Let's Boogie. That's it's, great. It has an awesome album cover, and every song on there is just rocking and cranking. And they're a band that you listen because I've been watching some live YouTube videos of them playing as well, and they just have such an energy, and you could tell that they're having a good time playing it. Their songs never give up, like never let up. I mean, they never. You know, let you breathe. Right. It's just just straightforward, hard rock, and they're they're great. You know? Absolutely. A lot of their melodies are excellent. Uh, BC, what do you got for us? I'm listening to a bunch of new stuff. I guess you could say, like everything from uh, uh, Every Mother's Nightmare is new one grind to uh, Fozzie's new one Judas, and uh, the band I was promoting earlier, uh, Bigfoot. All right. Yeah. New music, people. <laughs> yeah. Get out there. BB, how about you? Broke my heart the other day when you sent me a text. Uh, I downloaded the, the self-titled album from Zebra because Zebra was supposed to play October 27th and they act, and they ended up canceling. I know. Uh, Say it ain't so. Yeah. It is so. so. I, I'm pissed. They go back know, on my bucket list. Bucket, <laughs> another bucket list band that, that for some odd reason, I, I don't know what, what the reason behind it was, but uh, yeah, I downloaded a self-titled album and, you know, the, the way the album opens up and tell me what you want. Uh, tell me what it, you want. Great, great song. Uh, I think that I think that's played on Hair Nation on, on Sirius XM, if I'm not mistaken. And I think another another one I think I did hear on on there is Who's Behind the Door. Um, great song. But yeah, that's 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 all I've been listening to. And uh, get out there and fix your fix your differences and get out there and yeah. tour Zebra. I don't think they. I don't think it was them. I, it might have been a. A ticket sales thing or something. Uh, I don't right. think it was the actual band. I, I don't want to say his location. Yeah, yeah, because it was the venue, new, venue. Yeah, I this new know. new venue or something. It sounds like it's like a like a video arcade or something. Yeah. I don't know what the hell the name of the place was, but it was something. It's not really. It wasn't right. like the uh, your average club or something that they were playing yeah. in. Which which that sucks because I was definitely, you know, I, I told BC I said if I have to walk to Allentown, which is about an hour and a half drive from here, I said I would do that because I have never had an opportunity to see those guys because they don't play around here. Um, at all, so they go back on the bucket list for me. Good call on that. And I'm gonna. There's a band that I'm listening to. They they just put out their second album. They're called Phantom Five, and the first album they put out was just Phantom Five. But this one, this new one is called Phantom Play Six. No, <laughs> Play Play to Win is the new CD, and it's the the vocalist, the original vocalist from Bonfire, Klaus Lessman, and um, guitar player Michael Voss, and I'll tell you what, these guys, great, great melodic hard rock. If you guys are into that stuff, just just check them out. If you listen to Bonfire, Bonfire yeah. or if you like any of the uh, 
new new type of uh, European melodic bands like Eclipse and bands like that. These guys fit right in with them. They would be a a, a great band to to see live. And um, so check them out. They're called Phantom Five, and the new album is called Play to Win. A couple of the songs on there, the title track. Um, Phantom Child, Had Enough is great. Changing You is, is great. And they have great background vocals, great melodies. The guitar playing is, is excellent on there. It's it's produced very well. So you guys, check those guys out. And and I, I can't agree with Dylan Moore about, um, about Volbeat, too. Those guys, I've really been listening to them a lot, too. And uh, I'm glad he brought them up. So, uh, you know, that's, that's all we have for you this week. We hope you enjoyed uh, Billy Rock. Go see Harpo in Northumberland on the 27th and go see them at the Woodlands Inn in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, November 4th. Yep. BB and BC and Dylan will be at that show. I will be en route to the Kiss Cruise at that time. So, hey, if you see those guys down there, say hello to them and enjoy the show, everybody down there. And uh, BC, final words. Like I said, support this music. I cannot stress that enough. I mean, yeah, it's hard to catch a show, but if you can get out there... Catch a live band, especially a new upcoming band like uh, Denman or anybody. Yeah, uh, once again, you know, I, I just want to you know end up thank, thanking Billy. You know, we we followed we've been following Harpo for years, um, years, years and years. We're we're like Harpo groupies now, and, you know, and roadies and helping them and talking, and buying yeah. them drinks and Male groupies. you know, <laughs> really 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 <laughs> humble band and you know. It, it's really great to um, have Billy on the show and promote his stuff because you know they really fell on some hard times with Lloyd getting hurt and they probably could have they probably could have been the they were there. the big thing there they but, were uh, there and, yeah they were right, right on that right on the cusp of uh, of making it big and you know it sucks fate intervenes and stuff like that and it, it just sucks and before I give my final words I'm gonna I'm going to do a couple thank yous here real quick. Uh, I'm going to thank my wife, Corey, as usual. Dylan, for doing an awesome job behind the board. Mark Satorka that did our music. Um, Caitlin Provo, Heather Shakaris, Ken Keenan, Matt Porter, and Billy. Billy Rock for coming here and sharing Harpo stuff with us. Uh, Billy, we love you, buddy. You did an awesome job, and we really appreciate you coming up and um, and just uh, giving your, your story, part of the story. because we got much more to come with Billy. And uh, Stephen Michael and Sonny Pooney from the Grown Up Rock podcast, Christine Apostolico, Jeff Keith, Steve Dill, Glenn R. Palmer, Jennifer Bannon, Lori Talrico, uh, Chris Craig and David Hudson from the Digital Killed the Radio Star podcast. I want to thank everybody out there for listening, tuning in. As BC would say, support this music. Uh, obviously, if you're listening to the show, you do. Check out Harpo. They have a lot of stuff online on YouTube. They have a, a ton of videos on there. You can actually listen to all of their albums on there. Go to their, if, if you're within driving distance of any of these shows that they're playing in Northumberland or Wilkesbury in the next two weeks, um, go check these guys out. You will not be sorry. Oh my God. They, we can't stress how awesome these guys are. They're a great it's live hard to band. Put them into words. You know, we just, we love these guys and we love you guys out there. Interact with us. Catch us on Facebook, on iTunes, CastBox, Ear Peeler, anywhere that you can pretty much listen to a podcast. You can listen to us crazy guys here talk about all this shit all the time. And uh, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. And we will see you next time. And there will be a next time. Mm-hmm.